everybody, I'm Tom Vassell and welcome to our live coverage here at Origins 2018. Now you haven't seen much of me over the last couple days because we've been doing a whole lot of live with publishers, right? So publisher after publisher has come through and they're showing all kinds of things here and all sorts of different people. However, we're doing something different today. I started this a couple years ago, but we never actually promoted it much. And that's the showdown showcase or whatever we're calling it. Um, so what we're doing here is we're giving people a few minutes, actually three minutes and 30 seconds um, to show something off or just to talk about something or just to be here in general. Um, so in past years, we saw Summit come by. We saw the um, dice flicking game that Z-Man has done. We saw things before they were big. <clears throat> So we put out the word here, and I'm looking and seeing a line of like 20 people already. Um, there's all kinds of people watching, so if the people here seem nervous, that's why. If I seem nervous, that's a lie. My voice is going, but it is getting better. So we're not gonna waste a whole lot of time here. Um, I do wanna tell you something, if you're watching this live, we do have someone monitoring the comments, but they're not gonna be really relaying them to me. So you're not gonna be able to ask these people a lot of questions because we need to keep things moving and going. So that being said, we're gonna get started here with our first uh, person and uh, they're gonna come up in just a second, as soon as they're ready. I'm ready whenever people are. <laughs> okay, so I know nothing about any of this. Actually, I, I should that lie. Some of these people I've met before, but not a whole ton of them. Alrighty, here we'll slide over just a bit so we can all fit on screen here. Alrighty, hey folks, I'm Tom. Eric. It is good to see you Sylvia. all. All right, and start the time. Okay, you already started the timer. All right, what do we got here? Hello, we're Eric and Cecilia Highland. This is our game, Fleecing Olympus. This is a dice rolling, negotiation, take that card game where you're taking up the mantle as a god of Olympus, fighting over the throne using your wit, and... Uh, it'll play, it plays three to six players. It'll be about 30 minutes. It's coming from Passport Game Studios in at Gen Con, actually. It'll but it's be, coming out at Gen, at Gen Con. And it will be for $25 MSRP. And when you're doing the game, you are going to take your god power here, and it has a even and an odd power, which you choose your power on your turn, set it to that side, flip the coin to the even or the odd side, pick your target, and roll dice to try to take money from them, which will be these gems that are hidden behind your screen, so no one knows exactly how many you have. Once you would roll the dice, the higher of the two dice, if you are correct, would be what your opponent owes you. By if correct, you... it's the sum of the dice, either even or odd by the sum. Yep. So if you are incorrect, like this shows with five and even, you would owe them the lower of the two dice and gems. But before those gems are exchanged, the person who has this token, which is the judgment token, they're the one that ends the round and forces that payout. So the cards that can be played... That affect add, all of this. These ones will add certain types of more money exchange, which is legend or fate, which come with corresponding resist cards to pull them off of the table. The Shirt of Nessus with the legend and the Shears of Atropos with... The fate. All of this is Greek mythology items. Who did the artwork? Uh, Matt, Matt Franklin. Yeah, our friend Matt Franklin got the art contract for this. And there's one of this card in the deck that actually stops one of these from going out to force somebody into actually taking what's coming to them. So just to clarify a few things, it's one person's turn at a time and they're going to be challenging one other person? Yes. Yes. Okay. But it is real-time card play. Once the dice hit the table, anyone can play cards from their five-card hand. One for free, and then everything else, they have to pay one to the middle to play one card. Now what actually brings a lot of this together is there is free form bribery and extortion in this game during that time. Well, I'm opposed to that as a general basis of things. <laughs> so I could say, hey Tom, if you give me two gems, I'll give you a hand with this and I can use this card, Pandora's box, to flip that, car that coin over, making it correct. So now instead of you owing the other person, they owe you. Because the goal is to get the most gems by the time you go through the deck. So you can kick Zeus off the throne. How long did you say the game was? Uh, about 30 minutes. So I noticed here all these gods Artemis and Apollo are different. Is that's that on purpose? That's our promo card. Oh. And that's actually the two of us. Yep, that is designed after my wife and myself back when I actually had hair in 2008. <laughs> one of these pictures is correct. <laughs> I won't point out which one is wrong. But yeah, no, the first copies that are coming out of the game are going to have the Apollo Artemis dual card in it. Okay, so the game's going to come with dice, these cards, 
a whole big bag of gems. Big bag of gems. And then a shield per player, or just yep. there's yep. shield per player. player. And it's two to six. Oh, three to six. Three to six. Three to six. Okay, and you said 30 minutes? About 30 For minutes. About 30 minutes, yep. And $25 at Passport's booth at Gen Con. All right, well, this is the first new Gen Con game I've seen. Congratulations on getting this one picked up. I look forward to trying it out, actually. It does look, whoops. <laughs> Any gems that fall on the table are the property of the Dice Tower. <laughs> well, that's pretty exciting. So this one is published. Yes. No Kickstarter, nothing. Nope, this is Wow, a published game. Out. I was expecting all Kickstarters today. Yeah, all straight to publish. <laughs> all righty, well, fantastic. Thank you guys very much. Thank you. Look how Thank fast you. we did it. You've been nice pitch. Good pitch. Thank you. All right, let's. Yeah, I like this artwork a lot. Okay. Pass my appreciation uh, on to the artist. Right you guys can vote on which one you like the best. No one will ever know, but you can do it. Chad, I'll tell you when to start the timer. That way we. Okay. That way, it's more of a official yeah. thing. I figured I'd wait till you introduce yourself to them. Uh. <laughs> no rush, no rush. Oh, actually, here, we're going to have you sit here and we're going to throw that chair out of the picture. Sounds good. All righty. Okay. And well, before we start the timer, we'll have you introduce yourself. What's your name? Okay. Yeah, Tom, my, my name's Rusty Lumpkin I'm with Three Nail Games, and this is Why a, do I know that name? Have you done something before? Have we uh, met before? I've, I've met you a couple times, but that but must be this it. is All right, our the first game. All so, right, so this is Sea of Plunder. Yeah, so this in Sea of Plunder, you are a merchant ship. You're chasing after mysterious and elusive treasure islands that the first one starts out in the beginning or the center of the board, but it can actually move across the map. And one nice thing about this game is it is a round world, so when you pop off one side of the map, you pop up on the other side Pac-Man style. Um, so on your turns, you are going to be playing cards that move you, but there's also a barrage of pirates out here as well. And so you're also going to be discarding cards that are going to allow you to move the pirates. So you're going to have a hand of cards that allow you to move according to these old treasure maps that you have found, hoping to reach this mysterious treasure island. Along the way, you can also stop by these different port cities and pick up goods along the way, which are going to be cashed in at the end of the game for set collection points. So you gain mega points by going to these treasure islands. There's also a set collection aspect of it. And then along the way also we Are have, these pirate ships here? Yes, yes. What happens if you run into one? So if you run into pirate ships, then you have to bribe them with a good from your hand. So that kind of ruins your set collection going. But if you don't have any goods to bribe them with... can't fight them? Uh, not in this game, no, or, uh, at least not yet. So um, we, we have debt that you end up taking on, uh, which will be negative points at the end of the game. I feel game. like I would have fought them. But, um, <laughs> You're a merchant ship. So this is a pretty small world also. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How many players is it? So this plays two to four player. It's a lightweight strategy game. And so one of the uh, funky, cool aspects of it is we are going to have custom 14-sided dice. Oh, so, automatically plus one point. Yeah. I have these dice. Okay, and, and so ours will have um, skull and crossbones, and one will be alpha, and the other one was going to be numeric, as you see here. Um, so w whenever I somebody a gets a treasure island, you are going to roll the 14-sided dice, and that is going to give ten. us our new coordinates. So we're going to go over to 4 and down to 10. Wait, what if you roll 14? 14, great question. 14, that means that the pirates instantly get a treasure. So the game has two end of game mechanics. So anytime somebody ends up getting three treasure islands, that triggers end of game, last round. Or if the pirates end up getting six treasure or treasures. So this here is a mechanism that can allow the pirates to gain treasure, um, and it's going to be at a random rate. So some, some games are going to finish quicker than others, all right, and kind of gives you, puts you on the edge of your seat of not knowing when that game is going to finish. But also the pirates can gain treasure by racing across the, um, across the seas and gaining this treasure as well. For example, if Bob's getting close to that treasure island and I can't make it there, I might race the pirates in and try to grab up that treasure island, which will then generate a new treasure island somewhere else on the map. Uh, so we don't have much time left. Where is, how are people, is this a Kickstarter? Yeah, we're going to be Kickstarting July 3rd. So What company is doing this? Uh, Three Nail Games. Oh, that's so, right. You said and, that at the beginning. So this have is, you guys done any other games? Go. Nope, this is it. Oh, so what so, made you do it on your own? Um, just really wanted to be able to um, 
kind of put the theme on it that we were really felt fit the best and going the art route that we felt really pulled out our idea of what this game should be. Um, so just wanting to be able to do that and uh, then also just got some really great encouragement talking to other publishers, other designers, and so it's it's been a fun learning experience, that's for sure. All righty. Well, cool. Thanks so much for showing it off. I We'll have to see. I, I, it sounds interesting. It sounds like it might take a play to see how it works. I'm, okay. I, I need to visualize my head. I'm not, I feel like you should have some fighting pirates in there, man, like a special <laughs> card. All right, well, thanks for coming right, by. Thank I you. appreciate it. All right, see a plunder that was. And you said it's kickstarting when? July 3rd. July 3rd. Just a couple weeks. That is kickstarting. That's when Dice Tower Con's happening. That's my plug. Oh, a sign? <laughs> All righty. There we go. How's it going? Good, good, good. Face the camera if that's okay. Please. Alrighty, so while we're talking about it, this is why we're waiting for this to start. Dice Tower Cruise is January. You guys, if you're watching this, should have signed up for it by now. We only have 20 rooms left. They are going quickly. We've talked to a lot of people here at Origins who are like, hey, I'm going to come on the cruise. I'm going to sign up as soon as I get home. But you're already at home, so you have a chance to beat those guys and get those rooms. Also, Dice Tower Awards are finished. They will be announced at Dice Tower Con in just a couple weeks, two weeks from actually like two weeks and three days. But we'll be doing that live also. All right, we gotta get started here. Let's do it. Hello. All right, what's your name? I'm Seppi. I'm Seppi? Yep, yeah, chief, chief game designer for Fight in a Box. This is processing. Fight in a Box. Yes, this is our third title. Atlas Games distributes our games. So what other games have you done? Uh, we've done Squirrel or Die and okay. End of the Line. All End right. of the Line was our first Kickstarter. It got three stretch goals in and delivered three months early on our promise. That's the thing that you should be bragging about. Yes, three months early. So this is our next one coming up for October, November, depending on the reviewer's schedule. And it is processing, where aliens have conquered the planet, they have enslaved us all. Figures. And your job is to figure out who gets uh, processed into meat, who gets probed for science, and who gets freed to live in our alien utopia. I'm going to guess that these two are losers. <laughs> yes, they are. But I'm not sure. I want to be clear. Yeah. I don't want to be me. Yeah, well, but I also want to thank you for wearing such a complimentary hat for our, our box cover and poster. What is this garbage? <laughs> I didn't even read this. Yes. It's to serve humans. It's, it's, right. it's people. Okay, so that's what this is. It's based on that kind of theming, right? It, it so we that. know this is happening. Yes, you do. You have been enslaved. Right. And I want the other players to get eaten. Uh, yes, and you do this by uh, making sure you have the most victory points by making your hidden alien overlords the happiest. Why are these guys wearing fedoras? Uh, a couple of them are. They're hipsters. This is the major uh, complication with the game, is the aliens, or the confederated alien overlords, pronounced cows, cannot tell the difference between human and bovine life forms. Okay, that seems legitimate. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, at the, well, not that I'm calling anybody a cow. <laughs> He did. I did. So it is a game of horrible democracy. So you would get a certain number of voting tokens, and then um, everybody else would, and then you would basically simply put a vote in an empty space. Oh, these are like, these are player colors? They are, no, they are voting tokens. Every player would get one for each where place that they wanted to go. Oh, I see, I see, I see, I see. So, well, what's this? I see yellow ones then. Those are for the full game. Those are uh, a golden ticket, a double vote. Oh. So every turn you would get to vote thinking what you want to have happen, all right? You basically pick, your, each player will get three secret alien agendas that they will be uh, trying to make happen. Okay. All right, so I want toy bots. That's yeah, the toy bots are adorable. They want hipsters to be freed, while the tentacle beasts want everybody to be probed. 
I don't like the tentacle bees. Yeah, they are. They're scary. So the, the deal is, are they also... <laughs> Fabulous. Have, uh, yes. But David Bowie's people, they, they wanted him back. And no, it is, it's a great way of uh, explaining what's happening. So these stars are basically the things that uh, make the aliens happy. So tentacle bees are very happy when hipsters get probed and when cows get probed. But they don't want anybody to be let go. Okay, so they I get hate mad these cows. guys so much. I know you hate them so much. So here is the, there, there's a mad cow track, and then there's a, a victory point track. Victory point track is for winning. Mad cow track is for losing. The person who makes I'm the glad cow, you clarified yes, that. Yes, the mad cows. The person who makes the mad cows the angriest automatically loses, no matter what their victory points are. Okay, so far it is my favorite theme I've seen today of the three games. Oh, thank you so much. Um, I don't want to clear our time. There's a lot of great things, but I wanted to thank so you this for is doing not this. Being, is this being kickstarted? It kickstarted October, November. This is our third title. Wait, it has kickstarted or is kickstarted? It was going to be October 2018, November 2018. And depending on our reviewers. Do you know when it will deliver and when? Uh, well, uh, Christmas uh, 2019. Woo, that's a long time away. But you'll remember you saw it here first. <laughs> thank you so much, Tom. All right, hey, thanks for coming by. I appreciate it. While he's packing up, let's see what else I got. Utterly Nutzoids, that's the Eric faction. <laughs> Shroomies, that's the Derek faction. Body Snatchers, that's Kenny faction. Vengators, I don't the know what that is. The Missionarians, that's me. <laughs> the Space Clowns, it's Jason Levine. Classy Gray, that's Z Garcia, classy. <laughs> Thank you so much. No worries. So that reminds me of a, oh, there goes, yeah, just go that way. That reminds me of a lot of uh, uh, games like um, where one person loses and everyone else, and whoever has highest points wins. That sort of thing is always fun for me. All right. That's my favorite so far, theme-wise. Greetings in Farfig Newton, or Farfig Newton, excuse me. All right, everything's, oh, we're playing a game. We're set up and ready to go. Today is cosplay day. You don't wear a lab coat every day? I don't think I've ever worn a lab coat. No, I, maybe I have. You know, it's funny. Yesterday we were out on the town, and I, I didn't take this off because I'm like, I feel comfortable wearing this, you know. Everyone thinks the doctor's running around town. Nope. Oh, I thought you were about to tell me you were a doctor. Are you ready? Only mad science. All right, Kyle, this is Kyle. I'm Tom. Well, you already knew that. All right, let's start it up. What's, what are we looking at here? Uh, first is this of all, game called The Lab? Uh, no. First of all, Tom, it's nice to meet you. Oh, well, thank you. It's a beautiful day for some mad science. What we've got going on here is Gamma Grunts is a deck smash game. In what does that mean? Deck smash means it's like a deck builder, except the goal of the game is to smash each other's decks. We have our drafting piles here for drafting like a normal deck builder. And here's example cards. All right, so I see my deck is full of Gamma Juice, Brutes. This artwork looks familiar. Our artist is James Koenig with Freelance Fridge. He's oh, okay. uh, in Arizona, great guy, we love him. So and discoveries. All right, I got in my Gamma deck. Grunts, a deck smash game, everyone takes the role of a mad scientist bent on world domination. There's only one problem. There are other mad scientists in your way, so it's your mission to smash them in the face. I mean, deck. No, 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 face is good. Smash <laughs> your face would be a good name for the game. So, everyone has the core resource, Gamma Juice, that you saw in your juice. This is the radioactive goo that all of the grunts are made out of. You'll notice in the upper right-hand corner of every card, there's a cost. Right. That's how much gamma juice you have to spend to be able to play them for your hand. So not buy them, but play them. Yes, to buy them, we'll get to that. So, you have a stack of gamma juice. You take the gamma juice, and to play a card, for example, contaminated here. If contaminated is in my hand, to play it, I have to send the gamma juice to the lab for processing, which then permits me to play contaminated to the field. Got it. Ah, yes, thank you. So, you also notice we have a different type of card that's got the orange background and the lightning bolts. These are disruptions. They are cards that you may play at any time during anybody's turn except during combat. During combat, you're only allowed to play it after blockers have been declared. Wait, I missed the combat thing. Is this kind of like magic? 
Uh, it's a mixture of Magic the Gathering and deck builders, and we throw in some stuff that you don't see in other games. So, in a normal deck builder, when your deck runs out, you take your discard pile that we call the recycle bin, and you shuffle it back in automatically. So in our game, you have to spend resources to do that. So we have a resource management aspect. So if at any time you have to draw a card and you can't, you go completely insane and are unable to ma manage anything anymore and are eliminated from the game. So it's a player elimination game? Or first to 20 infamy. You How long does the game take last? It varies based on the player count. A four-player game where everyone knows what they're doing, it'll take up to 45 minutes. A two-player game can go as quickly as five minutes. Yeah, but okay, so I'm playing a four-player game and I'm eliminated 10 minutes in, I might not like that. Yes, I understand that. That's one of the things we're trying to work with right now is deciding on what to let them do. So one of the main components with our game, with the disruptions and abilities that grunts have, is you get to screw with each other while things are going on. And what we were thinking is perhaps to have a player, if they're eliminated, to just be able to screw with stuff that's going on while they're eliminated. So even though they can't do something, they could smash, which is to destroy a card from someone else's stuff and remove it from the game. So everyone gets to always interact with each other. And player elimination, yes, we are working on that. We haven't decided how to finally, how to uh, finalize well, that. Unfortunately, time ran out, but so real quick, where. Is this going to Kickstarter? Yes, we will be going to Kickstarter on August 14th, right after Gen Con. We are here in booth 566, if you want to give it a quick demo. What company is this? Hipline Industries. New You've done other game? You have no, done this is our first game. Your first one? Yep. All righty. Well, that's a deck building, attacking a deck type smash. game of a deck smash. Deck smashing game. Sorry, these will... I got You'll that. need to sort them back out. Hey, thank you hey for thanks for coming on. Yeah, sure. This is probably why I've never met a real mad scientist, because there's too much competition between all of them. Yep. Thank you. Have a good day. Hey, thank you. All right, we're down another two people, one. All righty, so here, this is one that I've actually seen at a booth at this con. Center can shaft, and tell everybody? fallen okay. elements. So we can see here why they're setting up. We see evil Harry Potter and this guy uh, escaped from the local old oh, folks home. <laughs> fighting a sailor. This is a Yeti with just a skull for a head. Oh, Lord. We have an archer, and then we have one of the Nazgul up in the corner. So I'm going to guess this is That's the a romantic Shadow. style game. I don't think so. <laughs> from the, what I've seen so far. This game. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Oh, here, so slide over then. Hey, you know what? We you are get the, get George and Annie Anthony of Not My Eyeball Games, and our game is called Center Shaft Fallen Elements. Is this game out? Um, it will be out on Kickstarter in October. And it'll probably be about a $60 game. And we're up on BGG as well, so you guys can look us up Are you up guys on the there. designers? We are the designers of this game. How many players is it? Two, it, two to four. Yeah, two to four players. All right, so it looks like we got some kind of weird dungeon here uh, this, with you know, Cthulhu small stuff. small little thing here. It's actually going to be, it sprawls out pretty good. You just pick a, a tile and lay it, you know. So you can basically build anything you want? You can build however you want, but this thing's going to move. Because you got cards that actually move the tiles around. You have to take that game. It's right. a competitive take that race to the finish. Yeah. We've been told that it's like an Indiana Jones type Cthulhu-ish game. Who did the art for it? Tyler Johnson, Sketch Geek, did the art. Beautiful art. He, he did a great job. There's a lot of tentacles in this. There's two phases to the, yeah, to the game. The, the thing is... All right, on the back. It's like a Rubik's Cube. You want to go ahead and show them? Where this yeah, you want to show oh, them. Yeah. It's like a Rubik's Cubish labyrinth where this right. tentacle creature is. Oh, so you're going to be able to be sliding these around like this? Yeah, you can move them around. you got card effects. It will, will change the whole aspect of the game to it. It won't even look the same. At so it's a it's a draw and re resolve yeah. from the deck, and then you... Can I see those cards? you got yes. your movement tactic that you use. 
you can reflect and, and uh, block uh, card effects. So it's not... It's not permanent effects. Not Are so we fighting each other or fighting monsters? It's, it's, it's competitive. You're uh, fighting each other. You're racing to get all the element rooms and mark them up on your... On your uh, okay, so once here. I get the each element room, I'm going to mark it. And yeah. as soon as I get all four, then what? You get back to the middle. But it's easier said than done because you're, you're trying to stop people. You can, the only competitiveness in this is is just go out, get the get the yeah, uh, element, element token. tokens, and yeah. get back. The gems give you extra powers. They just give you special abilities, kind of like a weapon. You can have as many as you want, but they can be taken away from you. And Wait, this says do damage, so you can get killed in this game? Yes, but you respawn. Okay. But you have a death right token that'll lay there, and wherever your stuff is, you can come and get it again, or, or somebody or else can else. get it. That happens to me in video games all the time. Yeah, I, I, I love uh, Gauntlet, so. <laughs> Was, okay, so this is kind of based on Gauntlet. Now, is this yeah. like what the game is going to actually look like, or is yeah. some of it going to change? Uh, mostly, except we're going to do matted finish on it, you know, because the gloss is, you know, just pretty red, though, right? Miniatures. Yeah, we tried to. We didn't see too many games that had red to them, so. Well, you 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 handled that. Are these spaces on the board like this? Yes, yes yeah. those are spaces. So what if I get here? There's nowhere to go. I'm stuck, right? Well, can you rotate stuff? Yeah, yes. you can rotate it. Ah. You can move and There's and cards move that around. actually do that in the deck. But this thing will, will lay out. This is one good. of them. This is a dimensional shift card, yeah. and it will take one tile one and tile, move it to move the other. Yeah. The sand rift will take two. The whirlwind will take all your element tiles and move them around. Paul Grogan did our rules, so you'll be able to understand it. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Grogan also wants me to say, hire him. He'll do a good job on your rules. He did a great <laughs> job. So many plugs. <laughs> See. So uh, you're, you're, this is the movement. You've got your strategic movement here. And whenever you choose a movement, you put it on here, and then you move. And it doesn't matter which way, but once it's full, then you reset. All right, so how long is the game? It is about 30 to 60 minutes long. And this is coming to Kickstarter when? October. All righty, well, look for it then. Oh, yep. time is up. It's so fast here. Thank you you so guys much. have a booth here, right? Huh? Are you at a booth here? We are not. Not this year. And where did I see this? We did PGT. Ah, uh, that might be where I saw it. Alrighty. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. We've been working on that. That's about two Center years. Shaft. All in elements. <laughs> the game in which you are shafting the other players. <laughs> yes. Alrighty. Wow, the chair line seems seeming to grow. Alrighty. Well, folks, now they're going to announce it. They are opening up the exhibit hall, so everyone's going to run over there and buy games now. Thanks Thank so you, guys. Much, I appreciate it. All right. We're, we're back down to one chair. Hey, I know about this game. You know about this game. I, didn't, I mean, I don't, I, don't know, I don't know anything about it other than I've seen the picture. Right, right, right. Oh, that's actually 3D. Remember, uh, oh. Yes, thank you. All right. Well, let's start it. I am a huge fan of the Dice Tower. My Wait, name is Michael Howard. Is this a published game this or a coming game? It's a published game. game. It's already um, out. It's a great game. It's a solo game. <laughs> is it your game? No, it's not my game. Are you here to push a solo game on me? No, yes, exactly. I'm here to. Z Garcia! Come on! Yes, and he did the review on, on your channel, and it That's was a wonderful I know review, it. and it's fantastic. And I just want to talk about it more because I think, as a light solo game, it's really great for the industry to promote shorter solo games. So, again, just to clarify, you're just here because you like this game? I do. I love this game. I <laughs> I like this. And it's great. And Nothing being sold here. I'm cool. And I'm, um, this is my first convention I've ever been at. Yeah. And this first day at the convention. And I decided to come here because I love the Dice Tower that much. And I just wanted to. So why should I play this over a game with other people, human beings? <laughs> well, because if you have just a short amount of time. and I'm kidding, solo wanted, player, yeah. Gil. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And you want just a, it's, a, it's got a nice uh, roll. Well, mechanic. I'm going to look at you some of this stuff here, okay? Yeah, why is it? What? Now that's it hang opens. on. Wait, come on. What? And it's got all kinds of replayability because it's got all these different ships, all these different little uh, nice. Because uh, you got to fill up your ships with your crew, and you got all. Whoa! These tokens. I didn't know. Oh this. no! It was such a nice insert, and it's just. Oh. It's not a nice insert if that can happen. I'm just saying. <laughs> I don't like this artwork. I'm just saying this artwork looks like a kid drew it. <laughs> And you got all these. And so basically, you're he didn't do the art, so I'm not being mean, folks. <laughs> so you basically set up a uh, trail of all these tokens, and you're going around rolling, 
and you use these dice. What these do? What these ships like find stuff? You're, yeah, you're basically an evil ship coming towards you while you're trying to get to them. And as you're going, you're picking up crew members to fill up your crew before, well, you get there before the enemy gets to your place. You're so it's picking up like crew members game. from the sea? Yeah. yeah they're, they're floating like little, there? Like little sea creatures. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, it's like little oh, creatures. I see, yeah, I see, see the I see. artwork? Yeah. So, and you have like special abilities that like you re-roll and, you know, this, and these, and lots of expansion. Like the game comes with, which is... Um, all of these games in this line that are made by this designer. Is this the Oniram like, stuff? Yes, yes. It's oh, yeah, man. So, you know, Z-Ray pushes the Oniram, but I think this game is almost as good, if not as good, as Oniram. So, which I think is great. I think everyone should play these amazing solo games. How long is it? Oh, 15 minutes, if that. And, and, and you can actually learn and play in 15 minutes. How obtuse is it? Because I know Oniram is not... The, right. The easiest game to understand. No, yeah, this one's so simple because it really comes down to a roll and move game, which I know you're like, oh, roll well, and move. That sounds right? awful. That sounds terrible, but it's, it works really well. The designer purposefully said he wanted to come up with a game that played well as a roll and, roll and move type And there game, are so. good roll and move games, folks. I know that for sure. So, but yeah, I just thought that I'd shine some more light on the, the solo genre. I like this so. a lot. I like I when people great. are selling stuff. It just makes it a lot easier for conversation. <laughs> so, All right, yeah. well. That's, that's I still hate this artwork. It. I really, <laughs> really hate this artwork. You didn't draw this, right? I didn't. I didn't draw it. So we're the good. The dice are good, and the ships are funny. I, yeah, it just it's got a lot of replayability in the box. It comes with like seven expansions already in the box, so it gives a lot of variability to play. You, is this your copy? Yeah. And you brought it here mm -hmm. to play at a convention. You brought a solo game. No, I bought it to show you to what? convince you that I, solo games are awesome. Look, I have not said Zelda games are not <laughs> awesome. I'm I mean, just I know Gloomhaven, right? So, you know, and Mansions of Madness, yeah, yeah. and that's it so, so. far. <laughs> All right, okay, maybe well, I'll play this one. We'll All see. Right. It's fantastic. I, I, I have should. been giving a, a nudge. Thanks for All coming right. on well, and showing it so off. Much. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. And sorry for throwing your game all over the place. And that was Nautilian, which is a better name than Oniram. I would play this one over on Iron because the theme looks more fun. Also, this one has dice. All righty. Who's next? Hello. Joseph. Yes, sir. You don't see you with a game. Exactly. I'm not here to promote anything. What? It gets better all the time. I know. You're just here to talk? I'm here to talk. All mostly. Right about one of my favorite aspects of Origins that I don't think gets enough play here every year. And that is the Rio Grande Room over here, which is free. Right. All right. But I also want to compliment one of their players. I didn't get his name. But it, uh, Roll for the Galaxy. I played this years ago. Here, talk a bit right and, into the mic. And I hated Roll for the Galaxy. I didn't really like it. But it was probably because of the person who taught it. So I went over there yesterday. My friend wanted to play. I said, ah, yeah, yeah. Kind of, yeah. But we played. I said, well, let's get one of these guys to teach us. And he came over, the most amazing teacher ever. And he was like, you do this and this and this. And I was like, oh, this game's actually pretty genius. And I loved it. So I just wanted to give Rio Grande that compliment of also, their free room. Also, it's a good thing that a teacher can make or break a game. Yes, huge, huge, yeah. So it was really... I, I'd have really, you played Race for the Galaxy before? I have, and I'm okay. I'm okay on that. It's not one of my favorites. It's it's too much iconography. Okay, okay. And it's, I, it's a I, little I too that. open. And like even you've said, like you'd rather play with people who know how to play. Yes. Because teaching We've that. We've definitely said that. Teaching that is a a beast, which I agree with. So I would rather just not play it in that case. Uh, but yeah, I really enjoyed it. So I wanted to give them a compliment. That's really well, we all I wanted give, to talk about. We really should give Real Grande a pop. They've been doing this ever since I've come here. Um, so, Origins has a place to play games, mm -hmm. but Rio Grande has their own separate room yep. where they show off their games. Now, I... Uh, They're uh, older games, usually. Uh, yeah, and, and well, that's because they don't come out with a ton of new ones no. all the time. But, like, hey, you want to play Dominion? There's always Dominion going on. Oh, there's Race eight, for the Galaxy, Roll for the Galaxy. <laughs> um, and then their new stuff, which I'm not remembering, like, uh, Beta Colony or something. Beta Colony? They're Atlantic... Crossing, Star Rising, something. Yeah, Real Grande has a lot of games. <laughs> great, great remem memory there. No, but I, but but again, it's always right there, always to play. In years past, and Jay does this at a lot of conventions. At Gen Con, he does it. Oh, they, and oh okay. He, and he provides food. There's a guy well, in there the, cutting the, roast the, beef. Is well, there the, one the, here too? The, it's more snack foods, but yeah, it's drink, it's free snacks, free food. Yesterday, he had Cuban sandwiches for lunch, free. 
and they were they were amazing. See, that's really cool. Okay, uh, we're not always the biggest fans of real grande games. Sometimes they're great, sometimes they're not. But Jay is a class mm -hmm. guy. You go to a convention, play for free, eat for free. Which at any convention is amazing. To eat for free? Oh, yeah, especially if it's good food. To eat for reasonable prices is amazing. Sure. So you thought it was good food then? Uh, pretty good food. Well, since I have just a few seconds left, what is your best food you've had here so far? So far, the best food we had was Schmidt's. Oh, the German? We went to the German restaurant, okay. and that was exceptionally good. The cream puff there, I'm still feeling it. Um, <laughs> I should have eaten half of it, not okay. all of it, but... That was good. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. We got 20 Turning more seconds. You got many more uh, questions? Uh, don't ask me what the hot thing is because I don't know. Uh, I saw y'all did the painting competition yesterday. Oh, okay. Never mind. And I see that you didn't finish so well in that. Is there a reason your painting skills are so terrible? <laughs> <laughs> I thought I had a chance because I was going up against other people whose painting skills were also terrible. Sure, but I saw Z's. It was pretty amazing. No. Sam repainted that. Oh, oh, he, oh, he cheated. Z's was awful. All right. Thanks for coming thank, thank on. You. I appreciate it. Thanks. And props to Real Grande. Speaking of food, I see a hamburger or a cheeseburger. Or is that what this is? Cheeseburger. What's for dinner? Oh, you're right. Okay. Now this, I have one of these shirts. I'm Tom. You got the mic. So this is what's for dinner. Are you hungry? I am hungry. Let's get started. Great. All right. Chaz, I would hit that button, but... <laughs> All right, what do we got? Oh, is there, okay, so I see a diet with bacon, steak, cheese, wheat, so and it has all, broccoli. Oh, and a strawberry. Has all the, the all the five food groups, and then the sixth, the top of the pyramid, is the fats and oils. Today I will is eat the bacon. meat. So when you roll Wait, the, what? <laughs> Bacon's not a food group. Yeah, it's the fats and oils. It's magical. It's whimsical. All right. Of course it is. You're catering to the internet. Of course. But. Well, okay. Um, so in this, uh, when you do roll the die, when it's your turn, that's kind of the cravings that you have during uh, your turn. There's different ways to change that. So first off, what's for dinner? It's a palate cleanser game, two to, uh, two to six players. So you can play in between the, the meatier games, between, you know, Scythe, Terraforming Mars, games like that. Um, you have the, the dumpster here. Okay. okay. Oh. The dumpster. So in the game, uh, all the, the players are going to get different um, traits. And you can either have the bodybuilder trait no. or something like you maybe you have IBS, so you can't have those food groups. Uh, maybe, oh, oh. maybe you're a dumpster diver. Okay, maybe, that's me. Maybe you're a freegan, and uh, that's just what you are. So What's a freegan? Free food. Dumpster. You don't oh, that's what that's called. <laughs> you don't have to pay for it. I did so. not know that. <laughs> well, now you do. So, all right. Um, each player is going to be dealt three. You're going to discard down to two because you could have a, a conflicting trait. Uh, all players are going to, the dumpster diver actually says it has to be a hidden trait. So all, all players are going to have one face down uh, because maybe you're not always forthright with uh, either you're playing with your family or a group of friends. So you're going to have one hidden. I'm always forthright. So dumpster diver isn't a normal, hi, I'm David, I'm a dumpster diver. So maybe that's hidden for the game, okay? So at the end of the game, you're going to reveal, all players will reveal their hidden traits. Um, and then throughout the game, you are going to be having a choice of different oh, food, foods. Oh, finally. So maybe uh, crispy bacon, maybe some leftovers. No. It's negative points because maybe it's spoiled. Maybe it's been in there maybe a few days too long. Cheeseburger and fries. Cheeseburger and fries. Maybe some uh, mac and cheese with some bacon bits. Sounds Get delicious. Get that mac and cheese in Miami, Florida. Great board game cafe. <laughs> or maybe a Chinese buffet. So all these cars have what they have actually in the meal. Okay? So all the five food groups, I already explained that. So essentially, you're going to have some restrictions. Um, players will roll the die. They can acquire whatever is out here for free. So you'd be able to get that Chinese dinner uh, for free. If you rolled the magical bacon, it's wild in this game, you can get any card that you want. Well, that's the only way to get the bacon card, right? That is the only way to get the bacon card. Now, if you roll bad for your trait, you can't have meat, well, then you have to dig into your, your funds here. Okay. Let's say you're the first player. Okay. You have to dig into uh, some wallet cards that you may have. So maybe you want to buy that bacon. So you can spend the, the 25 bucks. You, you don't get any change. It's just a tip. So uh, I would never tip $5 for so bacon. So maybe you want the bacon, and then you get the bacon. It doesn't count against you. It's not a meat. If you had, say, let's just say you had IBS or something like that, or a vegan. Um, or another option is say nothing works that's out there. You can put one in the dumpster as your action. 
Now, if you put a food in the dumpster, I know it's a travesty to put bacon in a dumpster. Ethiopia. But you're allowed to do it. So, um, if you do that, you're allowed to draw more uh, wallet cards that can do different things on your turn. Uh, you oh, can so do your wallet might have poisoning. money in it or like action cards. Yeah, you can do that. Oh, Some no. things like re-rolling die, all sorts of things like that. So. All right, well, our time's yeah. up, so real quick, well, thank you. when is this coming out, where, how, what? Uh, yeah, so Kickstarter is August 30th, so think 8.30, a late, the, late dinner. What's the company? Uh, we're uh, a la carte games. Wait, what um, have you done before? This is our first game, first oh, okay. game, so uh, August 30th, Kickstarter. Yeah. All right, thanks for coming. Real thank quick, you so before much. you go, I'm going to quick do a game here about good foods or bad foods. Chocolate chip, good. Watermelon tomato salad, okay. Leftovers, bad. Chinese buffet, okay. Tofu salad, Okay, peanut butter and jelly, bad. California roll, <laughs> good. Eggplant, bad. TV dinner, bad. Survival food kit, bad. Fish and chips, great. Salmon and asparagus, great. Cheeseburger and fries, great. Steak and potatoes, great. <laughs> Beef stroganoff, I don't like it. Bean and cheese burrito, boring. Sausage pepperoni pizza, okay. Mac and cheese bacon bits, great. Glute freak, get that out of here. And a picnic, I'm not going outside. Hey, wait a second, this is, this is apocalypse chow right there. Are you sure you want to rethink that? That's some apocalypse chow, maybe you may need it. So maybe you need to rethink that. I am not rethinking that. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks so much Tom. for coming on. I appreciate it so much. I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Thanks. And so great box. Right Thanks so much. Look at that. Although, where are you getting a square burger from? The answer is Wendy's. All right. <laughs> Well, this is, uh, we're going we're gonna to flip these so the people can see them. Appreciate it, Tom. This is very purpley. I chose purple as a color to show off today. Because so that, that is my uh, favorite player color is what he's going to say. It is my favorite player color. <laughs> yellow and purple. Is it? Oh, yep. no, yellow's, yellow sucks. Yellow sucks. Yellow sucks. It really, really sucks. All right. Whoa, miniatures. Yes, miniatures. We have these... Um, a guy named Brandon Barron did these for us. This is like a styrofoam ball with a stuff coming out. What is it? Oh, this, this is uh, the World Nautilus. And this is uh, basically what happened to Earth when it was misterraformed. So the, the humans in my uh, 4X space game, uh, Quest for Gaia, they accidentally terraformed Earth badly and have ca you know, caused a problem that wreaked havoc on the universe. So each, each, uh, each miniature has its own lore and its own uh, purpose. Um, so it's a standard 4X uh, style strategy game, uh, very Euro-y, very deterministic, uh, with four, four, paths to four paths to victory. Uh, there's the technology path. You earn points for getting technologies. I like that. You earn points for um, becoming chancellor. Where's that chancellor ring at? There it is. Uh, Chancellor is the first player, so they get to. It's an action selection game. Kiss it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I actually make my nephews kiss it during our games. Do for you? For fun, for fun. I make like everyone kiss ring. my ring. <laughs> so, this is an action selection game, so the Chancellor actually gets to take his action, his or her action, first. So, they're unblocked. So, that's why it's a desirable position. Each race is going to have their own political influence, so, Chancellorship is another way to earn, earn victory points. Um, there is the trader path where you want to basically use these covenants to form trade relationships with other players and finally there is the warriors path which is you know you basically Sam Haley you're here <laughs> the, 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 the combat is deterministic there's no dice um, ooh, I know it's it's uh, risque but um, it works out I hope it's it but it's not risky <laughs> not risky apparently <laughs> Because it's no risky. <laughs> um, so, so the you earn points for area control, control of these points of interest that are that are advantageous to the universe. How long is the game? So the game looks amazingly long. Yeah, talk closer to the mic. Sorry. The, the game looks long, but it's not. It's about 30 minutes per 25 to 30 minutes per player. Uh, I got that down. I like how you have that 25 to 30 minutes. Oh, sure. Uh, 30. We'll say 30. <laughs> how many players? Uh, it's one. It's two to Here's five. Stop. Two to five players, and um, we are looking to get in the Kickstarter one to five. So I'm trying to get a single player uh, mechanic. Is this your in first there. game? Yes, it is. First so it's a game, brand new company? Brand new company, first game. Broke rule number two <laughs> for Tom Vassell. You can what, do did a, you name the company Quest for Gaia coming? No, absolutely not. I, I did take that advice. The name of the company is Open Door Games. 
All right. Yeah, so watch us on Twitter. Wait, that's like, Board Game Geek. that's like an anti-Dice Tower statement because we're shut the door. That and is then exactly, you open it. That what is exactly in the world? Where the, where the statement came from. It's in playful opposition to the phrase shut the door. I'm sure that's, yeah. that's it. All right, well, so if this is Earth, then this thing is massive. The scaling, of course, the scaling could not be true for all of these. Otherwise, oh. that would be the size of the table. Um, so the game comes with pre-made races. All right, so well, we have, time is up, unfortunately, but I'll quick oh, look at these races. Humans, yeah. Mechlons, Well, John one of the draws for the game is that you get to create your own races. So players create their own races. They're given this little pad of paper, and it takes about five minutes. And here are these space worms. So go on, Board Game Geek, create your own race. All right, I'm going to create everybody. my own race real quick. <laughs> uh, my race's name is the Shut the Dorians. Uh, my starting governor, Anarchy, of course. No, Dictatorship, Pfft, that's me. Uh, I can choose one starting tech. I'll pick optics because I need to see. My racial traits, we are lucky, super spies, unnatural warlords. Oh, wait, we got more. Never mind. Merciless. <laughs> lucky and merciless. Wealthy and lazy. We only get to pick four. In other words, Tom we're Russell. a political group. <laughs> All righty. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you very much, Tom. What did you say is coming to Kickstarter? Coming to Kickstarter on 3-3-2019. So we got plenty of time to, to get it right. My daughter will be 19 on that day. Tell her happy birthday also. Oh, happy birthday. <laughs> sure thing. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> By the way, if you're wondering about this nice table here, it's from Table Toppers. You can get oh, one sure. too, and you can put this on top of any table. All right. Oh, this game looks much smaller than the last game. It is tiny comparable. Wait, I've heard of this game. You have. Why did I know about this game? Suzanne mentioned it. Uh, yeah, Secret Cabal talked about it a couple times. That's right. Well, oh, then video we're us. done. <laughs> here, let's all slide over so we can get in here. All right. So okay. what's Black Sonata? Okay, so we're we're side room games, um, and this is our first our first uh, foray into. Oh, this is a solitaire game, right? It is. It is. So it's a solo game. Um, the, only re the only reason we're here is because you hate solo games. So we want to. Okay, come talk again, to you. I not said I hate solo games. <laughs> So uh, thematically, Black Sonata, uh, Shakespeare wrote a bunch of sonnets about a mystery woman, and no one, no one knows who she was. So in Black Sonata, you're I thought it was Queen Elizabeth. <laughs> you're uh, yeah, that's the theory. So you're um, you're moving around London, tracking uh, tracking the dark lady, trying to figure out who she is. Um, and when you find her, you're you're getting clues about her identity. So the goal is to basically figure out who she is by by the clues that you get, and it's a, a deduction, uh, solo hidden movement game. Okay, so she is one of these people here. Correct, yeah. So the way you set the game up is you'll pick someone randomly to start, and then you will travel around London going through her stealth deck. And so as you can see, the stealth deck here, you set up the deck uh, alphabetically. So there's Z, Y, X. Got and, it. And so you'll, you'll set this deck up each time in a specific pattern, and then you'll start her in a random position by cutting the deck. Wait a minute, so I'm going to pick one of the eight positions? Exactly, yes. So there's eight games in here. So actually, inside the actual rule manual, uh, the designer also put together more paths. So total paths are 56 in the box. Oh, that's and, cool. Yeah, and different, uh, different levels of uh, difficulty. Sometimes she can move every time, and sometimes she'll stay in one spot, which kind of adds more... Uh, Oh, so I can play like a really basic game if I want? Exactly, yes. Yeah, and so the way the mechanic works actually is if, uh, if you want to hold this for a second. So what you do is, Sorry. no, that's all right. So as you're doing a search, right, uh, I will take my, if I'm in the location at Bishop's Gate, I will take the Bishop's Gate card and I will put it uh, like this and I'll flip it over and I'll do a search. And if I see the, the silhouette through the keyhole, I found her. And if I haven't, I don't. So for example, there I was a miss. However, so for example, if I do the search this way, and I look, I found her. How did you know that? <laughs> wait, so, that's wait. Hang on. Yeah. So these all have holes in them. Yes, they all have holes in their different locations. And if you look at the cards, I'm, right, each each card, I got the her. silhouette changes, and you'll be able to find her. And so every time you find her, you un, you basically unveil a person she isn't. And the way the the deduction works is, so say for example, uh, the purple sage is our dark lady, and we have unveiled Penelope Rich. She matches one trait, either uh, promiscuous, has a child, or has ties to the royal family. Um, one of these traits will match this card. And so on this card, if you reveal this one next, one of these traits will match this card. And you'll continue to unveil clue cards 
and it'll give you ideas of, okay, well, it can't be the ring because it doesn't match here. And eventually you'll be able to try to decipher what her clues are, what her uh, traits are. So maybe you- Do you need to use paper and stuff to keep no, track of all no, those? No, so you have these tracker tokens where you can say, okay, I definitely know it's not this one, so maybe you'll set this aside grayed out, but you definitely know it's the, the chain, so you put it there. And as you're going through, you're kind of saying, okay, I know these are still in play, but I know these other ones aren't. And eventually you'll try to make a guess. And if you're right, uh, once you find her the last time, you can do a search, and if you're correct, you win. If you don't, you, lo you lose. What's the? I, I know you're saying that we're trying to, to figure out who this is, but what's yeah. the actual theming? Like, am I at the, you are a private eye? Am I like an enemy of Shakespeare? No, the, the, the theming is basically you're trying to solve the mystery of who he referred to as the Dark Lady in the sonnets. So you're kind of like a historian trying to figure out. Oh, who oh he okay. That's man. Yeah. I have to say, I really like that theme. Yeah. I really like the idea of this a lot. Exactly, and that's that's the one this, thing that drew to the game is it's so unique. Okay, so I wasn't necessarily sold on the other game, but I might play this one. When's it coming out? So it's on Kickstarter right now. It's live. Uh, we blew through a bunch of stretch goals. We're about halfway through the campaign, and I think it wraps up uh, July 1st. What, what, what would this sell for? Uh, it's $24 shipped in the U.S. for free, and then add uh, $5 shipping to the EU and 10 to the rest of the world. And how long will like a game take you? Said uh, this is about a 30-minute game, and actually, it's usually gonna be pretty quick uh, if you once you kind of figure it out. Um, yeah, it's it's super fast. I really like this theme. I'm really interested in this. Well, hey, uh, we have some review copies. Actually, Mike uh, Delicio has a copy, and he played it last night, and he said he lost horribly, uh, but he really enjoyed it so far. So. All righty. Well, thank you, guys. Cool. Thanks for coming on. I Thanks really appreciate it. Neat. Black Sonata. On Kickstarter now, right? Yep. Yes, sir. When's the Kickstarter end? Uh, in July 1st. Oh, you got plenty of time, but oh, take yeah. a look at it. All right. You are about to this Shadow looks like Shadowrun Shadow stuff. Yeah. It's a worker placement game for Shadowrun. This is on Kickstarter right now. It's got about three days left. So this is a this is a catalyst thing. This is a catalyst thing. Uh, this, so yeah, this is a Shadowrun Sprawl Ops. This is on Kickstarter right now. It is a catalyst game. But as you can see, we are uh, from Linvander Studios. Woo, I love these dice. That's a lot of dice. They're really nice. We have metal dice on the Kickstarter. I like metal dice. Yeah, they're really slick. So let's see. We've got basically the flow of the game is that each player is going to control a team of Shadowrunners. Got it. Well, uh, they're, they're, I mean, as sense. you expect, right? Right. Um, these Shadowrunners have with standees that correlate to a runner card. The runner cards tell you what pools of dice you get to build when you go on a mission. So the worker placement portion of the game is to accumulate more cards and hire more runners to fill out your party, equip them with awesome stuff like, you know, the Ares Predator and uh, whatever other upgrades for your runners. Upgrades give you more dice to roll, and you're trying to beat... Oh, bad guys. Mission cards. Like this really cool looking nightclub photo op. Yep. Or escorting the Space Needle. Is this like the boss? Yeah, so the objective of the game, you're gonna need to do the smaller missions to get enough money, to get enough cards, to get good enough to be able to beat the bigger final mission. I can beat it. No, I can't. Oh, that's a good uh, you roll, You probably actually. need about 25 dice. <laughs> 25 this, dice? This, 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 is, this is a big game. Wait, like, so I'm gonna actually come in the final battle and get to roll a ton of it's dice? It's not uncommon to have runners that have like four cards on them. And they're, each card's gonna add like two to three dice. And you're gonna send your whole team for the final job. Yeah, so this guy's got two. Let's look at this card. This guy's this, this Street Samurai has got two Street Samurai dice. If we give him the Ares Predator, he's gonna have two more. Okay, so I got I got four now. That gives you a special veteran. Yeah, yeah. If you've got five dice of any one kind, that gives you a special veteran runner bonus, where you actually get automatic successes on some yeah, of, one of your dice going in. One of your dice stays face up. Wait, so yours but just to clarify, at some point you're getting to roll buckets of dice. Oh yeah. Yeah, the final mission, your dice pool is probably like 24 dice, right? Uh, what else can we tell them? Oh, so our involvement in this project, it's a Catalyst game. It was designed by Dylan Bertolo, uh, who did, uh, he was involved with Dragonfire. Okay. Um, Catalyst is publishing this game, but uh, Linvander Studios did some last minute development on it. And then uh, we pitched them a cooperative expansion, which is a Kickstarter exclusive. So in addition to being a competitive worker placement game, 
you can hop in with the cooperative expansion, which adds another layer on top of this, where all the players are collectively working together to defeat a megacorp, which is trying to take over the city and push them out. Which one do you like better, co-op or competitive? Well, we're, we're Linvander, we're Canadian. Uh, I have like a maple, <laughs> I have a maple candy for you even. How about that? So, I mean, I think that answers your question. It's just right? weird that that's a, yeah. it, it does seem weird that that's a Kickstarter exclusive though, right? It's it's something that's a, lot, a little bit of extra spice just for the Kickstarter. We really want to incentivize people to jump on it. Now. Is it is it just rules though? No, it's uh, it's rules and components. Uh, oh, okay. There's a whole other board that gets added above the city. How long does a co-op game take? Uh, about 90 minutes. Yeah, How yeah, hard it's, is it? It's the same as the core game. It's adjustable in difficulty, but it's the default level is tough. Like, how often would I? Uh, I don't think you'll win the first time. Maybe okay. if you're lucky. Like, how hard would it be compared to the other Shadowrun? Uh, Crossfire? Yeah. It's easier than that. The Catalyst guys were having a laugh. Well, that's good, because that game's ridiculously <laughs> yeah, hard. Out. Crossfire's brutal. <laughs> that's why I don't play it much, because I want to feel good about myself. Also, I want to roll 24 dice. There you go. So, uh, this game's on Kickstarter now. Yeah, it's if got it, three days left. Has it funded? Oh, yeah, it's like five or 600% funded. And when will we see it then? Uh, I think this will be out probably Q4. Okay, yeah. so around oh, SMB, probably, probably Christmas. October, November. Yep. Well, pretty nifty. Well, thank you guys for coming by. Thanks, Thanks Tom. Any game that has dice is good by me. And of course, it's finally the year of Shadowrun. There you go. Five years after they announced it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, guys. Thanks. And also, I got candy. Is anyone watching, Kenny? All right. We are halfway through, everybody. How are you doing? Are we halfway through? Are we feeling? Are we, do, are we doing good with the people? Halfway. It's a prototype. I was just about to say these dice are kind of not very good. I know, I'm sorry. This guy is holding a hubcap. All right, here, here. Move over, and we'll throw that chair out of the way. All right. Up to the mouth. I'm Tom Vassell. Hi, uh, Justin. Land. All right, he's wearing a Dice Tower ribbon, so we're going to treat him a little bit better than we would have otherwise. Awesome. So oh, Into the mic. Oh, sorry. Uh, so this is, that's Showbiz. Uh, the idea is you're a movie studio, and you are trying to produce movies. Uh, you do that by taking actions on the board. Uh, you're going to hire cast and crew, so... So it's like a hire, worker placement game? Uh, a worker placement game, and you can bump each other off. Uh, you can end up hiring, you gather cards. This is not a good director, it says. <laughs> not a good director. Uh, not a great actor either, a sock a puppet. A sock puppet? And then something, and so he's a Z-list actor, so like you're just trying to film yourself using a sock puppet. Or uh, a leading lady uh, who's an A-list actor. You're going to use those along with um, scene cards. Sorry. So, All right, so abduction. Um, so it, it's a science fiction uh, script or something along those lines. Whispering uh, sweet nothings. It's, a it's under romantic. the bed. No! It's a horror film. And knocked unconscious. Knocked unconscious. And what you're going to do is you're going to also, you're able to buy sets, so you're a movie studio. And if you match up like uh, a spaceship with being knocked unconscious, since it's an action in action, you roll the better dice. The idea is you're trying to make movies. Are, is this a game where you're like kind of telling the story of the movie, like, yeah. ah, you know, I was knocked unconscious in my bed and woke up on a spaceship type thing. We, we've had one time where a sock puppet or I, you have, like, a baby or your neighborhood kids. Uh, those are the scene cards and these are the cast cards. Um, so, like, an old man and they're, they get better as they get um, higher up on the Euler scale. Hey, I know this! Boy meets girl! Yeah, all of it's prototype work. I understand that. I, I don't want to self-publish. I'm trying to find a publisher. That's the way to do it! And so, um, but the idea behind it is you then match them up. So if I'm doing this scene on this, uh, on the spaceship, you're going to roll this dice, which is better than if I were to do this scene on, let's say, the mansion, which doesn't match at all. You roll it, and it's sort of like uh, your review of what you get. 
So that's a thumbs down. Uh, you can also get thumbs ups and blanks. You roll that all up, and depending on how well you do and what your actor is, so if it's a Z-list four star, you get 13 points and $10. You use that money to then buy more cards and you go around the board. Okay, so the actual review of your thing is a little lucky, but you, if your movie has the better elements in, you will have a better chance at getting better things happening to Correct. you. Correct. And what uh, directors do is they let you re-roll stuff. Got it. All right. So let's they, see. they're like, how oh, many dice would bad. you normally roll for a movie? Um, about five or six dice. All right, here we go. With about three. I'm making a movie. Well, give me, give me some stuff I can make a movie okay, with. Okay, yeah, sure. Just grab a whole bunch of. Well, that's quiet on the set. That's what I'm doing here. All right. Mm-hmm. Random movie. Here we go. I have an employee who's hiding in the shadow. That they're worthless. All right. I have. We'll say on an airplane. On an airplane, and then we're holding someone hostage. These might not have been shuffled. Uh, at a waterfall <laughs> paradise. <laughs> and there's an alien invasion in an enchanted kingdom. There you go. And then uh, there's an eerie tale told in a taxi. And I'm going to roll four dice, five dice, because I'm just feeling like rolling that. And the man, man's best, the movie star is a dog. It's uh, like Airbus. No, I want to... <laughs> Not doing a dog movie. All right. Little brother. A little, the little brother. All right, so I got two stars two and stars a thumbs and up. Thumbs down. So uh, that looks you, like up to me. It uh, looks up. It would normally be red, hopefully, but right now it's a prototype. Um, so let's just say you had a director that allowed you to re-roll two dice. So you can re-roll right, the blank. I'm going to re-roll these two. Thumbs All up. right, that's now three there and a half stars. Three and a half stars with a Z-list actor. You would have made $8 million and eight points. I'm completely satisfied with that. So, yeah. All right, so when's this game? Oh, yeah, you're looking yeah, for a publisher. I'm looking for Check a them publisher. out. How do people get a hold of you? Uh, oh, that's a good point. I didn't think that through. <laughs> uh, Justinland1 at gmail.com. Send them spam! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. Thank All you right. very much. Hey, thanks for coming on. Looks interesting. I like the theme. Well, now we're halfway through for sure. Thank you so much. Howdy. Alrighty. Mammoth. I, oh, I know this person. How are you, sir? Good, very good. There's Is nothing. This, all right. Just the front. That's all we got. <laughs> oh, wait. You didn't bring the big cool board? I saw the board over no, at the I booth. Know. I know. Too much to set up. I brought some tiles and the little, the little guys. All right, so. I'll, I'll explain it. Hey. I'm Tom, and you are? Jeff Van Ness from Soaring Rhino. So, uh, Tom, have you heard about the Harvard scientists that are trying to revive the mammoth? No, is that actually happening? It's actually happening. We've met the scientists. They're all behind the game and stuff. It's cool. They're trying to bring a mammoth back to life? Yeah, actually a hybrid. Like a, uh, They want to make a cold-weather elephant. Now, your next question probably is, why would they want to do that? No, no, I don't care why they want to do it. It sounds cool. <laughs> it does. I don't, I don't need any explanation. Well, the, the, the game comes in as on As long as I'm bringing back raptors, I'm cool. No, all right, yeah, mammoths are fun. All right, so... In Siberia, there's there's this permafrost that's melting, and they're worried about the carbon dioxide and methane getting into the atmosphere. So there's some scientists that have been um, bringing in herding animals to stamp down the snow and create uh, a plain of grasses and flowers, and it actually is is increasing the permafrost. But they're using tanks to like do it as well as the animals. So the Herbert scientists heard about this, and they're like, you know what? We'll give you a cold weather elephant that can do that job for you. And the game you actually play. The board, I, the, I didn't bring the board, we're all prototype right now on the art. Um, the board is a tundra, bleak, barren. And by the end I of the game, it. you're going to put on these flower tiles um, with your mammoth as your mammoth trapes around. And you're going to transform that tundra into a wonderful plane with flowers. It's actually octagons like this. Ah, so, I see. So what you do is, at the beginning of the game, you play with a hand of four. You're going to claim a color. All right, with your mammoth. Put your mammoth on that color. Purple for and, sure. Yeah, and then you um, can play a tile. You have to be able to grow your color. So at the end of the game, you'll get points for how big your color grouping is. At some point in the game, you can claim a path, and every color has a different... This is a rhino. That's woolly rhino. That's the one I like to play, gray. You know, soaring rhino and everything. And so you'll get points for how big your path is. So whenever you play a color tile, you have to grow your color or your path. And the best thing is to do both. And then if, how you play the tiles, you can also, if you can play a tile that you go right to your mammoth, you drop a biocycle token behind, and that'll give you a point. And if you can grow another color besides your own, you know, you can grow 
Uh, it's hard to lay out here, but if you can grow purple and blue at the same time, let's say this well, one's This here. will do it. Oh, yeah. Let's like say it was that. You can put a flower token on that and get three points. So you can get points as you go, too. So basically, that's what you're trying to do is lay these octagons and squares, transform the tundra into a wonderful place, and get the points by dropping your tokens and getting a big path and color grouping. And if you do close off your color grouping, you can score it immediately and go start another patch someplace else. All right, so that's the one version of the game. Got it. Now at Soaring Rhino, we like to kind of give you something different, be a little innovative. So right. what we've done is we've given you a competitive version of the game and a full co-op version of the game in the same box. Which one's better? Depends. I like both. I like both. It's, what a it's salesman. <laughs> no, in the, in the co-op, you actually have goals. So in the, in the competitive, you play as a mammoth, and you, it's whoever does the best job, best mammoth in converting the tundra. In the co-op, you play as a group of scientists trying to guide your mammoths to do certain things. So like, you have a color goal. Maybe you need a huge yellow field of 22 tiles. So you've got to work together to make sure someone can do that. And then you maybe have a path goal. They have to make a, uh, a path that's like 16 tiles long. So working together, you have to create that tundra meeting those goals. All righty, so when's yeah. this coming out, or is it kickstarting? Kickstarting October 1st, um, and actually some of the proceeds is going to go towards this effort to revive the mammoth. I really want to see this mammoth thing. I know <laughs> I'm not trying to derail the game, but now I'm like thinking about this mammoth coming back in. Yeah. These guys also just, just released, or are about to release Shifting, Shifting Realms. Realms. Yeah, so. that's coming out. We'll have it for uh, Gen Con, hopefully. Who's the designer of this one? Craig Van Ness and Jeff Van Ness. I'm Jeff and Craig. Craig, if you haven't heard, is yeah. one of the guys who worked on Heroes Game. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. So, all righty. All right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Man, I want to ride a mammoth. They probably wouldn't let you do that, though, if they brought him back. And I'd be like, oh. What? Is that a shark and a bear? It is a bear shark. Okay, that's half good. Because sharks <laughs> suck, Pete Shirey. <laughs> Sorry, Pete. He's not sorry. He told me that when you weren't around. That's true. Sorry, not sorry, Pete. Sorry, not sorry. Trying to set up a big box board game as fast as we possibly can. <laughs> All right. So I actually know a little about this game, right? Yes, you yes. were saying that so we got a lot of hybrid bad guys here in this area, right? Yeah. So Barnacle Bay was once a peaceful fishing village taken over by the evil cult leader, Elder Bane. He uses dark hate that magic. Guy. He uses dark magic to corrupt the inhabitants of the city. So, for example, the peaceful otter fishermen are now crab arm crazed otter grunts. We've got tentacle bunny zealots, fish bat casters. Oh, poor bunny. Okay. And my personal favorite, the berserking bear sharks. I also agree that this is the coolest miniature in the game. <laughs> uh, you haven't seen the croc lobster yet. He's probably my new favorite. Giant crocodile lobster, but bear shark is pretty amazing. It's hard to top bear shark. Now, these are the good guys. Yeah, so we, we are playing as heroes from the Wanderers Guild. We're working together to save Barnacle Bay. Now, we're just straight animals, right? Right? Yes, yes. We are all just animals. So we've got Tank the Turtle Guardian, uh, Finn the Wolf Ranger, Ibexus the Goat Wizard, Roland the Red Panda Warrior, and we also have Kira the Ooh, Squirrel Thief. Oh, a Red Panda, nice. Yeah, he, he's kind of our mainstay character. He was the first character that started this universe of Wander. So this is like an adventure style game? Yes, a Kabuli co-op dungeon crawler that also features a choose your own adventure campaign. The core game comes with over 24 scenarios in it. So after you defeat the intro scenario, it plays just like a choose your own adventure book when we were kids. So so, you know, the Wanderers got to the cultist's den. They see a path to the left. Um, here, here cries for help to the right, and something can glow way up ahead. Which way did they go? What you're looking at there is our event deck. So there's several events in the game, over 65. Um, when you're going through the board, there's these darkness tiles, which are Elder Bane's dark magic. So you have to explore them, and you can be good, and you find some treasure. You get a loot card. Boom! What did I find? Found I found a frying pan of doom. Frying pan of doom is actually one of the better level I already one own items. this at home, just <laughs> as a clarification. <laughs> well, doom. And one neat thing about the loot in this game, there's over 90 loot cards, and there's no duplicates. Every piece of gear is a unique piece of gear. So no one's running around with the same sword and shield. Everyone's got their own piece of armor. If I recall fine. correctly, you had said something like this is a game that kids could play? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Very family friendly. The game is very simple to play, but then you have to work together as a team to win. Now, this has already been kickstarted, right? Yes. We did it very well on kickstarted the end of last year. We're in production right now. What do you, what do you project? Uh, by the end of this year. Woo! I'm actually really looking forward to this. Oh, thank you. Thank um, you. We're really excited. Everything's been going really well. Because you've worked on other games similar oh, to this in yes. the past. Yes, I've been working a lot. This is just the first game as my own entity. Right. So it's very exciting. So it's one to four players? One to five. One to five players. 
Um, so you can play it by yourself and go through. Oh, yes. And the monsters, are, they move kind of like on predetermined yeah, paths. Yeah, completely AI-driven. And uh, no, all the monsters are, have automatic successes or, or failures. Um, enemies attack. When they attack, they have automatic attack. So when, it, like, say this grunt's attacking, he's going to attack tank. He, he's automatically got one damage coming towards him. He's just going to tank just has to roll his defense dice. There's no dice? Oh, there is there dice. There is dice. <laughs> oh, I mean, come on now. Dice. Hey, I need dice. So, this. so you'd only be rolling your dice. I never liked in co-op games where you had to roll against each other for got the it. enemies because it kind of broke the immersion. These are only prototype dice, so please, please forgive me. We haven't got our production copies yet. Um, but you would be looking for criticals or shields, and you would block it. And then when you're attacking enemies, they have an automatic defense. So if Tank was attacking this grunt, he's rolling three dice for his hammer, needing axes or criticals. He got three axes. The grunt has a defense of one, so he automatically blocked one of them, and we would do two damage. The okay. combat's very streamlined. Uh, your weapon to show you how many dice you roll and what symbol you're looking for. How hard is it? So I want to go through and with my kids and beat the first scenario. Are we going um, to win? It, it depends. If you work together, you will win. Well, thanks. So, so we're going to lose is what he if, just said. If you guys do not work together and you make very bad choices and you try to be the lone hero or you don't work together, the game will kick your butt very quickly. Because mm. I feel like if a game is, is co-op, it has to have a challenge to it or there's no game left to play. So if we, the game starts escalating in the campaign, the further you get into it, the more difficult it gets. But your characters are getting loot that carries over every single mission. So every piece of gear you get carries over forever. Oh, okay. I like that. So the game is getting more difficult as your characters are getting more and more awesome gear. All right. Well, unfortunately, that's all the time we awesome. have. Thank you, Tom. Very much looking forward to this. Bear Shark. Actually, the game is called Barnacle Wonder Bay. the of Barnacle Bay. I'm, we're just going to call it Barnacle Bay. That's fair. Just so you know how that, that's going to be. Okay. <laughs> I don't got time to say all that. You call names. what you want, Tom. <laughs> thank you very much. Oh, we will. <laughs> thank you very much. Hey, thanks for coming on. Yeah, thank you. And you got a booth here, right? Yeah, booth 630. Come check us out. Woo! Was it handshake, Mike? What? <laughs> thank you. All right. I've known about this now for like two years, I think. Yeah, we've worked on it for a while. Yeah. Looking much forward to it. Thank you. All right, how do you want this? Good job. Oh, holy smokes, what is this? This is the grimoire. This is blood on the clock tower. How do you want to arrange it? Well, we're going to do it like this, except this looks amazing. This cannot be actual size. Uh, it's going to shrink by about a centimeter on all dimensions, but it's going to be a big, beautiful book you A centimeter is not that, that much space. It's shrinking. It's, uh, it's a social production game that will eventually have about 200 different characters in it. So the seven expansions will fit into this box. Well, here, come sit over here. I should probably save this for a moment. All right, let's cool. start it up. And you are? Uh, my name is Evan Donahue. I'm with the Pandemonium Institute from Sydney, Australia. All right, this, this is the biggest game we've ever seen. <laughs> it's probably the biggest social deduction game you've ever seen. Uh, it is, Wait, it's a social deduction game? This is game? a social deduction game, a hidden identity uh, bluffing game. Uh, there is a demon attacking the people of Ravenswood Bluff. The good people are trying to execute the demon uh, and, and find out who it is in time, but the demon has evil minions helping it to read suspicion and sow confusion. Um, now. You we got to stand to do yeah, this. Yeah, no, we, got, we definitely got to stand to do this. We're going to have to bring this. up that camera. Sorry, Kenny. No, that's all right. Yeah. All right, so what's going on here? Okay, so this is just a standard setup of a game. Basically, there are five things that we think set this game apart from uh, a lot of other social deduction games out there. And I can kind of... Size would be one. Size would be one. Uh, bigger, is, bigger is beautiful. Uh, one is that players are not eliminated when they die. So there's no player elimination on death. Um, players stay in the game to the very end, playing as ghosts, trying to help for their team, winning or losing. Uh, some characters are even trying to die. This character, the Raven Keeper, for example, gets their information when the demon kills them. So you have a good player lying as other people, trying to get killed for the good of their team. By the end of each game, about 80% of all players are dead, and this is a good thing, because dead players get to vote one more time, and it's those ghost votes that decide the game. 
Uh, that the, sounds like Survivor. <laughs> there, are, there are elements of Survivor that transfer over. It does help that I'm a massive Survivor fan. Oh, you are? Uh, yeah, there's coalition building, there's persuasion. Um, I don't understand though yeah. why, I, I, no, I, I don't mean to keep harping on no, the same no, no, point, no, 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 no. but why is it so big? I mean, why couldn't this be a smaller thing? Uh, we are going to shrink it, we think, by about a centimeter on all dimensions. Uh, it's this big because eventually it's going to have about 200 characters in it uh, with the expansions that we release. This uh, base edition that we're going to kickstart in about January will come with the first three editions. So it started many years ago as a kind of werewolf variant, but has moved beyond that to become a, uh, a true bluffing parlor game. Yeah. So does it need a moderator? It does need a moderator. Uh, I think uh, moderator can be a bit of a dirty word with social deduction games, but this is Oh, I like actually, being a moderator. Well, no, it's one of the game's strengths. We liken it to the DM role in Dungeons & Dragons. Uh, with our group in Sydney, uh, people are lining up to moderate the game. You're competing to moderate the next one. Um, your job as the storyteller, the moderator, is to create the, uh, the best experience possible. You're choosing which characters go into the game. If characters become drunk or poisoned, you're allowed to lie to them and give them misinformation. So no information can ever be 100% confirmed, so evil players will always have cover to lie. Uh, they, the uh, classic phrase is, I'm not evil, but I might be drunk. Uh, so moderating the game is awesome. And I've heard people you, tell yeah. me that before, but I usually... So is this going to be kickstarted? Yeah, we're looking to kickstart, probably end of the year, around about January or so. This is your first game? This is our first game. This was just a thing we were doing in Sydney, uh, uh, playing this game that we love. Shipping loved. might be a bear. Shipping might be a bear, but um, yeah, the designer, Stephen Medway, uh, he's a friend of ours in Sydney. He just loves to mod games and create games, and we were doing this for a few years before we decided, let's actually How get How many this players? I mean, it sounds like it can have a lot of players. Uh, between five and 20. Five and 20, yeah. all right. Plus the moderator. So like you can just, so we can like, is it like, do you sit around in a group? Yeah, you sit around in uh, uh, chairs in a circle, so it's an open walking space. People can leave their seats to have private conversations. Oh, they can? Yeah. Uh, the storyteller uh, sits nearby with this on a table, uh, monitoring the whole thing. This is like flight control, tracking Ooh. who's in the game, what abilities are affecting them, what misinformation they're getting, who's dead, who's alive. Uh, yeah, basically, it's a. Alrighty. So this is called game, again what? Uh, Blood on the Clock Tower. Blood on the Clock Tower. All right, we'll look for the Kickstarter. Thanks Great. so much. Thank you very much. Why are there so many sheets? Uh, because they look like they're all the same. The three different editions. So Got it. Yeah. So you need about 20 sheets. But you have like one sheet per player? Yeah. They also work as talking screens. So you know, you're <laughs> Cool. I will sort all the time. Uh, all right. Back down we go. Easily the biggest game we've seen so far today. Oh, come on. Come on. <laughs> okay. All right, sliding over. Hey, Tom. Oh, um, just one? Okay, hey, I'm Tom. Yeah, hey, how's, how's it going? Good, good. Um, I didn't oh, talk into the mic. I didn't bring my oh, all prototype. The way up. Hold it up for here, yeah, okay. Yeah. I didn't bring my prototype today because it's a very rough prototype, but I've got a game about the music industry, and I've spent a couple... You've already told me about it, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, I've spent a couple years uh, working on it, and it's, uh, it's a big, all-comprehensive, all-encompassing game about every aspect of the music industry that I could imagine. I, I, I used to follow music when I was really young, you know, I was into rock and all that stuff. The game is called Vinyl Madness, the game of the rock and roll business. Now the game starts off with, uh, it has a role playing aspect where you have like a band sheet, it's like a character sheet in a role playing game, and you have, uh, you, you create your own name, you create the band yourself, you, you name it yourself like if you want to be, you, it plays in three different eras, like the 60s, the 70s, or the 80s, the age of the record album. And so what you're doing, like if you're playing the 60s, you could be a band that was like the Beatles or the Stones or whatever, and you name it yourself. And this is all very interesting because when I was young, I, I, we used to do that. We used to imagine we, we'd come up with our own names for our own bands and everything. I thought of a game that could do that would be really neat. And it's an actual game because you have like cubes. You, you pick your assets, which are like, there's five, vocal proficiency, instrument proficiency, songwriting ability. I'm good at all that. What? I'm good at all that. Yeah, <laughs> showmanship and uh, and promotional ability. And what you're doing is you're you're picking is a cube-based system, and you use the cubes to go uh, and buy your enhancement cards. You have enhancement cards that have special abilities, and they help you throughout the game. Now the game has a bidding auction phase where you, you bid on turn order. Whoever goes sooner does better. And then you have a planning phase. You with the cash that you have for that round or year, you buy. Uh, um, business cards that it's the planning phase and there's basically three things you can do you can 
release albums and singles. You can uh, uh, go on concert tours, or you can do merchandise like buttons, T-shirts. You know, in, uh, in, in any kind. Of I'm assuming when you say music industry, you're not actually talking about the whole music industry. No, just you're the, just talking the about age like of rock. The record album. Okay, no, but no, it could be no the, classical could, music. No, there is no classical. It's all contemporary. You could do country. You could do R and B. You could be Motown in the '60s. For each era that you're in, you can be like whatever. There's a bunch of genres for is each. Is there era. Dixie music? Uh, well, I have country. I have country. That, that is country not the same. I will. I will. I will flip this table. But I mean, you're gonna, you could like in the '60s, you could be a California band, or you could be a British Invasion band, like the Beatles and the Stones, or the, all those British Invasion bands that came out in that time. You pick your genre, and there's actually a special ability for each genre, for each genre, and it's for each of the three. Areas. What's the special ability of country music? Oh, I don't know all the special abilities. It makes so you many. cry. <laughs> Yeah, there's country music for each of the eras because country music went through all of that period, you know, the 60s, 70s, and 80s. But oh. like in, so is there disco? Yes, there's disco. You all right, disco we're back. We're back 70s. on board with disco. If you want to do the era of the 70s, you can be a disco band. Is there polka? Uh, no, there's no polka. Polka Why? is uh, it's, it's contemporary music. This is rock and roll business. Come on. You said it encompassed the whole music industry, and you have well, like already dropped like four of my favorite genres. Contemporary music industry. Come on, the stuff that can sell. They make Why? The, whole, they, ah! the whole point of the game is is the most cash wins. It's the rock and roll business. Now you can play other bands, but it's mainly the rock and roll. You're a rock band. So you kickstarted this? Uh, no. Oh, you're just shopping it around. Well, I'm looking around for a company. I haven't been able to find anyone. I went to the speed dating, and they told me I had to, that they, they, I explained the whole thing. I had the prototype there. I didn't have it here because it's a very rough prototype. So I'm, I'm, I haven't really got any kind of really nice prototype made yet. Well, unfortunately, we're out of time. Okay. But hey, thanks for telling me about it. Yeah. And look for him somewhere. Yeah, sure. The music industry. What's it called? Vinyl Madness. The Vinyl game Madness. The, world, the game with no polka. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm really like worried. I feel like if I had flicked that, that would have been a bad thing. It's a different type of game you could play then. Ah, that felt extremely satisfying. Yes. That As is, all that, that kind of hope. Hello, sir. How are you doing? I'm Tom. That really I'm felt Ryan. satisfying to see that go into place there. Thank you. Well, this is Evan. Um, we're Portland Game Craft. This game is called Mountain God's Revenge. So the whole theme of this game is there is a polluting, terrible city at the bottom of a mountain, and there's a bunch of mining camps and villages along the way up the top. Sounds like a recipe for disaster. That is the hope, actually. So from that's the flats at the bottom. From here up, imagine a mountainside. Top of the mountain, bottom of the mountain. Got it. Top of the mountain, there's an a angry mountain god who's not happy about this happening to his mountain and the lands below. I've seen this movie. <laughs> And so on the way down, he decides to unleash his five elemental slides. There's an avalanche, a rock slide, a lava flow, a lahar, and Wait, a flood. These are all happening on the same mountain? All on the same mountain. He's pretty angry. But it sounds like the lava flow and the water thing might hurt, cancel each other out. Hopefully. So. Wait, am I the, who am I in this game? You are playing those rock slide, avalanche, lava flow, flood, and lahar. That is Wait, your character. So to clarify, I'm a flow. You are a flow. A slide, yes. That's your options right there. Uh, I don't know what lahar means. A lahar is a pyroclastic flow. It's a thing that destroyed Pompeii. Big explosive, mud, cloud, gas. Goes real fast, right? No, I gotta be lava. Where's lava? All right, got lava right there. Is this the lava pieces? That is the lava pieces. Did you know I was gonna pick lava? No, but I feel like he was prepared. Orange is shiny, and so we figured you might want that. So that would be your player board right there. Got it. So you'd start at the top of the mountain here. So I'm basically gonna be built coming down. Exactly. And so that's how much movement you get a turn. That's how you move. So if that's downhill right there, that's how much it costs you of these movement points to actually get yourself down the hill. Are these asymmetrical? They are asymmetrical. Yes. If you're crossing any of these, these kind of ridges you have to get up over, you requires more speed. So it's an additional two to cross these. As you enter any one of the actual villages along the way, notice they're color coordinated with the players. And so if anyone enters, for example, one of yours, you would have a chance with a card in your hand to respond and say, my local worshipers are actually not so happy about that and I could do something to you. For example, the one you have in your hand here is flee. flee! And all everyone here, according to the color, will run away. So the person has to either decide, do I chase after them, waste movement, maybe going uphill, or bomb down and keep wrecking. So I'm trying to kill everyone, but not everyone, because some of these people worship the lava flow. Exactly. 
So you get points left for years that are left on the board at the end of the thing. The most points and the juiciest targets are at the bottom, and there's no player responses down there. So you can do a ton of damage and collect points. Mountain God wants you to destroy as much as you can. How long is this game? About 30 minutes. I'm assuming this is not the final production. Not the final production. We're here uh, pitching it. Hopefully going to get someone to pick it up. It's really interesting. I like the yeah. theme of it a lot. Thank you. Ma hang on a I second. Left, I left out an important part as well. Some of these cards can shift the mountain. The mountain god does have power over his own mountain, so he can shift things, he can move slats. It's modular on the setup. This guy sounds a little capricious here. Well, he's got a lot of power. It's his mountain. He just can't mess with them, which is why he needs you. Well, I expect a pay raise then. Well, you get to have all the joy you would ever want on destruction. What else would Lava want with its life? It's been sitting underground the whole time. Should I feel a little bad for killing people? I mean, in the end, they could be robots, you know, anthropomorphic warthogs. Well, it's what's kind of that? whatever you want. That is a sinkhole. So that's where you can't go where you, your stuff just falls right down. But if you have a special like you do, that when you trigger your special, which is turning in three of a single color, you can do a jump, like in that shape, depending on the color you turn in. What color? Do you mean the cards? The color of houses. So as you go down, you're going to be, okay, let's say I blew oh, up I this whole thing. Oh, I can spend those to do different exactly. things. Exactly. So if you have three of them, you can turn in. You could do the white special, and you would jump from, like, let's say you're right there. Your head's right there. You could do a white special and go, boom, there I am. Ooh, I do like that piece. All right. Yeah, so that's how you track where your head is. How you many could, players? Uh, up to five. Two to so five. It seems like five would be pretty crowded board. Five gets really crowded, yeah. But that's part of the, the design of it is that you just kind of have a lot of different interactions. You're messing with each other. You're moving the board to try to get things out of your way as much as possible, while also maybe stranding someone off on the side, in which case they would have to use one of their little magic mountain god bridges to try to get themselves back on. Ah, uh, magic mountain god bridges. All well, right, what's the name of the game? This is called Mountain God's Revenge from Portland Gamecraft. Where are you from? We're from Portland. <laughs> We're very creative in our names. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank and, you, sir. Uh, also, we have a game coming out of the Gray Fox next year after the Empire. Hopefully early next year that'll be All right, cool. So keep an eye out. Gray Fox, thanks for, for picking good games. Thanks so much, guys. Thank you, guys. I want to see if this is satisfying to un... Undo. No. No, it wasn't as that wasn't as satisfying. That was very efficient, though. The the building in there. I love these pieces. You 3D print them? Uh, we had, these are these are laser cut, right? Oh, here. they're yeah. yeah, they're acrylic. Yeah, like we it. did have someone do it. Thanks so much, man. Appreciate your time. Hey, thanks for coming on. Thank you. We've seen some really cool themes today. I would play the lava, though. I, I have to hold this. Hi, lava. You. We can come on and start setting up here. Is there two of you? Just him. Oh, just him? Ben All doesn't right. want to be on camera, so. Fair enough. Can I set this down for you a You can. Ben, start rolling. Woo! That's a beautiful mat. Tom, what's your favorite color? My favorite color is purple. Oh, perfect. I was worried you were going to say something that we didn't have. All right. Up, this game looks like. Is this game out? No. But oh, okay. The dice there. What? Look at all these dice. Wait a minute. Why are there purple pieces in this bag? Wait, are these my dice? Those are going to be your dice. The purple pieces are going to go here. Wait, I mean, is there that many dice per player? I don't want to undersell you, yes. Oh, yeah, you should talk into the mic. Wait. Uh. These cards look suspiciously like courier cards. I will admit that they are definitely suspiciously like courier cards. All right, so. But not. This is Day's Flack. And I, um, she has a, a die that has three double swords. Oh, no. Wait a minute. These really look like couriers. I would just say that. So but they have not. stats on them. What so, are the stats? Okay, Defense and so, attack? No, the stats are actually the dice's level and the dice's attack. So they will have pips, like warriors, like dice masters. Got it. But they will not have toughness. So I want you to think of dice in this game more like uh, an engine builder or deck builder rather than like actual characters. Got it, okay, so uh, I see. Well, yeah, no, you go ahead and start okay. talking. I, okay. I, I feel like I can do this part. Okay, so uh, what we have here, Guardians of Wayward, this is a cooperative uh, dice building game. Oh, it's cooperative. Game. Yep, it is cooperative. 
So, and it's got kind of a, a city or tower defense element. So there are obviously cooperative, a lot of ways to lose, very few ways to win. The one way to win is essentially either if there's a win condition on the event card or if you knock out the big bad. And that the big is the, my have, preferred way of winning. Yep, uh, the big bad will have toughness printed on them. The game comes with four, anyone from Dracula's uh, apprentice to Dracula himself. Uh, and essentially what the big bads are trying to do is destroy Wayward. Uh, and our guilds, uh, each player. Wayward's gonna play been my guild. home for 32 years. <laughs> each uh, player is going to take a guild, and cooperatively, we're going to draft cards. So these are not set. There's multiple characters. Obviously, we have this set up for demo, but there are multiple characters, and normally you'll draft uh, champions, items, and spells. Okay. So right now, I got one spell, two items, and three champions. Correct. You and probably then, want some of each, I would yes, assume. Yes, we did this for demo, so this is a pretty balanced layout. Um, Obviously, there are some really nice combos you can set up when drafting, so that's something to consider. Now, every player is going to start with 10 dice, five in their bag, five here. These are like your peons, they're squires. Slacker. Yes. So, squires uh, don't have any real special ability. They can give you one of each recruit, or they can give you uh, one attack or one attack. So rolling those into your pool, you'll get one re-roll after that, so you'll be able to look and say, okay, well, I only need, maybe you want him this turn, you need a shield, you can re-roll. What are these numbers here? So the numbers are the amount of dice that you're going to need to spend, the amount of resources you're going to need to spend. The uh, symbol is you're going to need to have at least one of those represented, so we have these powerful guild cards here. And this is kind of part of the cooperative play, is depending on which guilds are in play, there will be different guild dice down here. So you're the uh, Spider Silk Guild. People can buy these purple dice that have general recruit and special abilities. So to buy, say, Charisma, you would need five and one coin represented. Okay? Uh, when you roam in your pool on these sides, you're going to get a level and you're going to get an attack, as well as special abilities. So you'll notice she has a really neat one where if you play two of these symbol before her, in this right here, you use dice. This is to keep track of what dice you've played. So if you played two shield before her, you're actually going to gain one of uh, these dice down here for free. All right. Oh, unfortunately, our time ran out already. It was so fast. So real quick, how long does it take? Game, honestly, 30 to 45 minutes. Okay. Um, and it's gonna. It's not like a. It's gonna come with a bunch of stuff in the base game. Oh, how do we get this game? Is it a Kickstarter? We're kickstarting this in September. So we is this are, a new we, company? Uh, no, this is actually our third Kickstarter. Uh, Kid loves Tiger Games. We did Tabula Rasa, the Heard of that crystal one? bag builder, and then Alphas was. Oh, Tabula Rasa. Yes. Yes. Alphas, uh, our superhero minis game, was just kickstarted uh, a couple of months ago. Okay, now that one I haven't seen yet. Okay. okay, so yeah, that one's big, it's it's grandiose. This is a little smaller and we wanted to do a cooperative game with dice. I'm sorry, you said this was small? Yeah, this is smaller than our $100. Ah. This is actually going to be a $60 MSRP. But that's not small. I think I think you may be underestimating what that word means. Let's say medium. That's not medium. <laughs> 60 All right. is the average. Okay. All right, well, it looks really fun. It looks really cool. Thank you so much, Tom. All right, cool, cool. You throw all these dice Dial back in the bag. I haven't stolen anything from anybody yet. I should though. I should take one piece from every game and see who notices. Oh. Woo! Ben's here for you to just toss. That is the preferred dice tower methodology. Thank you guys. Thank you so much, Sam. Do you guys have a booth here? We are just demoing in general. Got it. Uh, like I said, we've been at Colossal and a few other places. Yeah. Uh, all right. Demoing the game. But if you want us to stop by, I have alphas and stuff here at the superhero games. Game. So okay. I just know. Right. No, I like dice game. All right, who's next? Come on in. Kenny, can we flip that so I can see it? I got it. I got it. <laughs> Hello, right. Tom. I'm Hello. Ryan. Squishing oh, just oh, a bit squishing? more. There we go. Okay, squishing. here we go. All right. Hi. I'm Ryan. I'm Melody. You're not. Oh, Melody's a good name. Yes. Yes. Is it Melody? Melody. Melody. Y or I E? What? Almost no one has spelled that way these days. <laughs> <laughs> it's too common. Yeah. But we are the co-founders of The Whole Card. And thank you for welcoming us to your table. So what we do is we are a, a, a Twitch stream that streams uh, role-playing games and board games. Okay. Um, 
we, uh, what else? I mean, like, really? And we're done. <laughs> we're done. No. <laughs> so what we do, what we do is we learn, teach, and play board games, um, and we kind of dabble and teach tabletop RPGs, like Dungeons and Dragons, but we like to look at a number of different systems that people may not be as familiar with that are still good for beginners or for veterans. Like? Um, such as, I'm currently running a Fantasy Age campaign. People may not be as familiar with the Age system, but it's, it's a rules light it. system where you literally roll three D6s. And that's most of the... No 20s? No 20s. <laughs> There's no 20s in this oh. one. <laughs> no 12s? No, no I want I want someone to create a, a, a RPG based around 12s. Just all 12s. I can work on that. 12s I are great. It'll be Tom Vassell's RPG. Wow. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that seems like a bad name. <laughs> um, but what we like to do, and we, we started the stream because we both enjoy board games. We... Um, a lot of our relationship actually ended up he's this is my husband and a lot of our relationship I, I ended assume up, nothing <laughs> ended up around board games and we realized that uh, despite both being theater people we found it still kind of difficult to kind of walk up to a group um, that might exist in some neighboring place and join a board gaming that group. is a hard thing to do it is difficult it can be really difficult to talk to people um, to go up and like meet someone and you know so what we are doing is we have a stream on the internet where anonymity is kind of a, a nice kind of guard a little shield but at the same time with something like twitch it really allows you to interact with your audience and interact with the streamers and still kind of feel like you're part of a community so we wanted to create a space where people felt they could come in say hello at any time, uh, ask us any questions, and not feel like they had to be afraid of anything to join a really, really inclusive hobby. So, wow, so I couldn't have said any of that. So, so you're mostly <laughs> doing RPGs. We're mostly doing board games. We, board board games. Games. We, we kind of we kind of split it up. We have uh, right now we have three live uh, shows on Tuesdays at seven o'clock Eastern. We're um, we do the, the RPG on uh, Thursdays uh, at seven. We do board games, and on Sunday afternoons we also do board games. Sunday Eastern brunch. time. Eastern time. Yes. Sunday brunch. So Sunday what's brunch. what's what's your current hot board game? Oh, I am. I, I don't get it to the table enough because she doesn't like it, but I love The Godfather. Guys, right, what about you? I like to just focus on mainly the lighter games. I uh, lighter games and cooperative games. I my favorite currently is uh, my favorite of all time is Betrayal at House on the Hill. Just that's just nostalgia. I wouldn't necessarily um, call that a light game. I mean, there's a lot well, going on in it. There is, but that's more for the cooperative aspect. Um, and then I like games like Pandemic. I like Dixit. I like. I wouldn't um, call Pandemic light either. It's, it's, but it's but Pandemic is a gateway game. For sure, I understand that, but don't get fooled by these. Snobby gamers who call everything <laughs> that they like, oh, that's light, you know. Oh, no, no. Well, that's no, 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 nonsense. No, no. Pandemic no. is a full fledged game. Oh, Everybody yeah, won't tell you otherwise. It's definitely, but it's definitely it's something not that, that you can teach. Z Garcia, a, a but oh, I'm just saying. No, 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 we, don't we, listen, we, don't listen to him. Amazing. He's wrong. Tom is wrong. <laughs> Tom is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we got one. I have an idea for a new segment. <laughs> Alrighty, so once again, how do people find your channel? We are on twitch.tv slash the whole card Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sunday mornings. All righty. Thank right, you guys thank very, you much. very much. I appreciate it. I feel like I'm getting a card. Yeah, you are. Oh, yeah. All righty. <laughs> All right. Enjoy it. <laughs> thank you, guys. Thank you. Hey, I see the end of the line. Am I seeing the end of the line? I believe so. What? Oh, my. A tower? Oh! This is not a dice tower. No, it is not a dice tower. It's actually a health tracking system. All right. Well, don't talk yet because we got to get your. Okay. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. This is from uh, Stonemaier Games, one of their piece sets of uh, potions. I know this because I know my components. I'm um, Brian Cromery, I'm the lead designer yeah, of, brick, of, what? of Brick House Games. I'm a startup basically, looking to publish my, uh, get my first game published. This is Altar of War, the two player head to head fantasy kingdom combat. Okay. It's unicard driven. 
Well, obviously a board game. Can we see a unit card? Yes, we can. I actually have uh, one right here. All right, so this is a Mystic. So it's an Orc. Can we see a good unit card? Mystic. But, yeah, right. I know. So that's the, only, <laughs> that's the only one that I've got commissioned arts for so far, just trying to get out there and find a publisher right now. Um, so essentially the whole point of this game is, I you know, you're going to instantly find a reference to, like, Summoner Wars. So I didn't say Summoner that, Wars, but I thought it. Yeah, of course you're thinking it. So what differentiates this to that is it's, it's full uh, kingdom versus kingdom warfare. So you actually have the health tracking system right there. So basically... So every single yep, every single time you lose health, just boom. Da, 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 exactly. Da, 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 you and got da, 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 and then, Yep. So there's two, two victory conditions. That's one of them. The other one is to raise tiles. So these tiles here are actually thematically tied to units. So for instance, the mystic here, when you deploy it to the board, it deploys on the woodland. It's a woodland orc. So if you're more familiar with like elves, for instance, there's like sea elves, wood elves, industrial elves. It's, Standard fantasy. I'm a fan of all elves. Okay. I don't want to get like into this elf differentiation. So, so each each faction. What elves are the best? Each faction is spread over three trains, and they actually share. Like you see, the orcs right here share woodland. So not only can you play orcs, you can actually mix factions, design your own deck, construction pregame. So I'm assuming this isn't collectible or anything. It's just no, straight no, up, no. right? No, expandable card game at, at at best. But we'll see. Maybe a big box game. We'll see. How many cards would you have in your deck? So there's 30 cards in your deck. And then the key difference here is it's streamlined unit card play. So essentially, don't have the artwork yet for, of course, the Tribe Elder. But essentially, every card in your hand is always playable, always the same cost, straight cost across the board. But it, every unit in the game transforms into a stronger unit ascending on the Altar of War. So that's the whole concept of the game, the Altar of War track over on the, on the side over here. So essentially, you have a choice of either deploying a unit or powering it up with actions over here and then once you get to the open slot you'd actually pull it pull this card from your deck and this goes to your hand and you'd play it just as if you would play the mystic so it's basically a stronger form so every card in the game has that option so you can decide which units you want to play and which you want to power up so it's just usually a similar role but sometimes a little slightly different but you know this one's a caster as well so that so this symbol right here the sun symbols for spells so this is the damage right here. So it's a little wordy on the cards right here to show. Why do we have dice? So the dice, that's ex it's the whole fuel of the game. So basically, instead of rolling, wow, that was pretty nice. So the whole point of the game is actually you roll the dice at the beginning of the round, so it's not rolled to hit. Instead, you assign the dice on the cards themselves. So for instance, this unit right here, the, the Mystic, you can choose which I can attack. assign this yes. to him, and now he can harvest. Yes, exactly. So you actually get to choose which attack you want to do with your units. So, so as you move them around the board, tactically positioning, think of like, you know, base like chess, you're trying to position. There is wrapping around the board, so it's not controlling just the center. But you're, it's area control, and yet, like I was trying to touch on here, there's two victory conditions. We already touched on losing the health, but there's also those tiles that you can deploy on or also can be raised. So you flip them over and then your opponent can't deploy to it. And if at any time you have six raised, that, that person loses. So there's a two victory condition. So there's always the threat of raising your enemy's tiles to achieve victory or to defeat them. So well, unfortunately, that's all the time we have. We have two victory conditions. So th is this Kickstarter or you're looking for a publisher? I'm actually looking for a publisher. I'm going to be at Kineticon. Um, uh, Kineticon? I, yep. Uh, Andy, I, I, showcasing there. I won the basically the CT fig to come and showcase there. Uh, so that's going to be in July. All right. Uh, July 13th to So 15th. look for him there if you're going there. And we'll look forward to hearing so from you. Brickhouse Games. You can find me on Facebook as well. Thank Brick you. Brickhouse Games. Thanks so much. And this is called Altar, Altar of War. War. Yep. Oh, thank you. Woo. And that's how you fold a board. All righty, we got another giant box coming. Giant box, small game. How you doing? Giant box, small game. I feel like you just lied as I see the game is not small. Right, I'm like, no, it's not tiny at all. This is Deck Derby. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, Why'd you get the mic before you talk? Uh, that probably makes more sense, yeah? All right, we got the Hampson brothers who are tied up. We have Salio, who's a frog, Testudo, a turtle, Silvis, a something. Some sort of cat. Jean, Jean Mao, a panda with, I don't know what that is. He's got is that a vampire panda? Yeah, yes, he is. Okay, I've not yet seen a vampire panda in the game. <laughs> and Lucky. The tailless dog. 
Doesn't look ex like his name is quite accurate. Okay, so you are one of these characters? Uh, yes, each player um, picks one of the racers. Uh, each one is unique. And oh, it's has, a race. Yeah, it's a race. It's a racing game. Uh, dice drafting racing game. Oh, these are these pirate? Are these like pirate? Or yes. Yeah, ship and yeah, they're making it's, animals it's race. Set, yeah, it's set in a fantasy realm where the world's been blown up by the by the elves, and everyone sort of lives on ships now. Um, Water so, world. Yeah. Well, minus Kevin Costner. But so it, uh, for entertainment, they all race. They have their uh, their pets and their their they mascots their pets? on the ships. But wait, what's the what are these? Well, they, they're, they work with, with the orcs, you know, so they're, they're all chained up. They're the hamsters. So they, they chain work. these three guys yeah, to make them run? Otherwise, they make, you know, they make that's, a lot of mayhem. And that's both crazy. horrible and a little funny. Yes, well, thank you. So basically, the way it works is everyone picks a racer, an individual racer. They have unique, um, you know, movement, attack, defense, and special skills they can all do. Each racer has a unique color, a uh, favored number and color, so they all roll five dice. So in this instance, I've got the... Uh, Lucky the dog and Testudo all right, let's the go, cat. Lucky. So, I rolled a one, two, two, three, and a four. There you go. So what you do is you all roll the dice. You place them in these bins according to the number. And and then you, you take turns drafting them. So uh, you each draft. Um, you, you draft dice until they're all gone, and you use them to upgrade. Why would your I draft racer. someone else's color? Well, you draft other people's colors because there's some. Um, some of your upgrades require drafting someone else's color. Okay. So on the sheet here, so if Lucky wanted to fully upgrade her dash, she would need to draft a dice of one of her opponents to put in that third slot to upgrade her dash to a seven. So you have a favored number and a color, which generally help you out quite a bit. Sometimes you have to draft your other, uh, you know, your opponent's colors and so on and so forth. Once you're upgraded, you draft the dice, you upgrade, and then you can you try to move around the board, attacking each other as you go. What happens if your health gets to zero? If you get to zero, you just get tired and you're forced to take a knee on your next activation. You just pull all your dice off, you don't do anything, and then you're fully healed. So you're never truly out of the game. Okay. You just sometimes you get a little bit tired. We missed some other. Yes. Each round, also you draw an event card, so things like the kraken can come out and attack the kraken. you. Kraken. I would never go to the sea in this. <laughs> well, you don't have a choice, really. There's no land, so you're that's gonna, true. You know, <laughs> sink or swim. So yeah, the the uh, the board will interact with you, push your racers backwards. Uh, sometimes there's match fixing going on, so they'll push the guy in the back forward and uh, tr truly screw with you. So it's really a you know it's a pretty quick game where you're uh, trying to get around the board, screw with your friends, and you know probably getting fist fights every now and then for for messing with each other. So it uses a combat system where you use your attack values and then you have a hand of um, combat cards that you play against each other. So you can either, you know, do damage, not do damage, make them hit somebody else, so on and so forth. So there's all kinds of uh, shenanigans and hijinks going on in the game. All right. So this is a, a racing game for how many players? Uh, two to six. Is, are, you, are you publishing it yourself? Yes. yes when? Um, it is live on Kickstarter. It just went live two days ago. Um, so we've got 30 days on that. After that, we'll go to the publisher. It should be on shelves in people's hands by December. By December. Okay. Is this your first game? No. Actually, we have another game that's out right now. We're selling uh, over in Booth 363. It's called Dark Mast. It's the first game out of this universe. It's a 1v1 um, uh, ship battle game. So you have a ship. I don't think I've seen that no, one. No, you should come on over. Um, it, yeah, it's a ship battle game. You upgrade your ship, upgrade your crew, your weaponry um, by collecting magical residue. Try to blow each other out of the water. All righty. Well, cool. cool. Thanks for showing yeah, it to me. Thank you very much. Appreciate I'm it. I'm rooting for these orcs. I'm really feeling bad for these guys. <laughs> I feel like they should have a chance. Well, they're pretty good. They're pretty brutal. They do as much damage to themselves as anybody else. I love people like that. <laughs> I'm assuming the game's going to come in a much smaller box. It will come in a much smaller box. We just needed a quick prototype and everything like that. Yeah, so no worries. It'll be a little bit more uh, carrier friendly. Thanks a lot. Appreciate you. Hey, thank you, sir. Have Appreciate it. Thanks, Is this sir. the last one? What? Can I, can I see where we're at in here? Hello, I'm Georgia. Hello, Georgia. Hang on, we're going to get you the mic so you can talk into it. Uh, All right, hello. This is my first time here, and I was really excited to see you. I made you these, and that one is for Melody. This is for Melody? Yeah. Who's this one for? That's for you. So I have a bigger one than she does. Okay, I just want to clarify mine's better. So is this like an alligator or a dinosaur? It's a gecko. Oh, a gecko. Does that look good on my shoulder there? Yeah. So what's your favorite game? Happy Pigs. Really? I like Happy Pigs too. Did you get the expansion for that? With, no, have we already asked this question? I feel like 
No, we don't have the expansion. Yeah, no. you can get an expansion for Happy Pigs okay. that has like sheep and ducks and all kinds of animals. Yeah, we saw them oh, you should get it. If that's your favorite game, you want to. I always play with the pigs anyway, but. <laughs> so, did you get any games when you were here? No, not yet. Dad's what? Mad trade. Oh, the math trade. Yeah, we went to the math trade. Did you play any games here? Not yet. Is today your first day? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So what do you want to do most of all? Um, play games. Did you see the Giant King of Tokyo? It's yeah. way over there at the yellow? I want to play that. I want to play all the Giant Games. Oh, yeah. Is there any other ones besides King of Tokyo? I didn't see any. Oh, no, wait. That's a fox one right across the, the hall here. The fox and the hound game. Fox and hound. I don't remember what it's called. But I it's... want to play Bunny Kingdom, too. Oh, that's a good game. I, I like that one. So you said uh, Happy Pigs is your favorite game? Yeah. What's a game you hate? Wits and Wagers. What? <laughs> but you never played my Wits and Wagers. You would like that one. Okay. Is this your first convention ever? Yeah. Really? So did you have to beg him to bring you or did you bring him? Um, he said I could come. Did you ask him why he likes such a bad baseball team? <laughs> well, thank you very much for these. These are really cool. You're welcome. So you made the, how long does it take to make this? Um, 15 minutes. What? You know how long? She tried to make a dice. Yeah, I tried to make you a dice, but it didn't work though. That seems like it'd be really hard. I couldn't even make these. <laughs> they, I painted a miniature yesterday and they voted for it being worst miniature. <laughs> so then I brought in some other people. They also voted it for being worst miniature. So I brought in more people, and they also voted it for being worst miniature. <laughs> it was very um, but It was very. I, I didn't have a good miniature. It was a. It was a robot. That's what it was. Can you paint? Yeah. You know, if you go over there, they let you paint a miniature at those tables for I free. Want, I wanted to paint one. Well, you have like a lot of hours left in the day, but I'm glad you stopped by here and said hi. Thanks for coming on, and thank you for these. I'll give it to Melanie. I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. What a great way to end it there. Okay, so here, here's some things that we can talk about real quick. You've seen now a lot of pitches, and most of these people were able to get it in two, three minutes. Not all of them, though, right? Some people can't pitch their game very as well as others. You can tell which ones are best. You need to be able to pitch your game really quickly when you're talking to people and be able to explain it as fast as you can. Even if it's a big game, you should be able to shorten it down as fun. I would say of the ones I saw today, uh, the, the Sonata game looked really good. I think I like that one. Maybe that's a solitaire, but that one looked the most interesting to me. Um, the, the one that's Quarriers looks kind of interesting, but man, that's really similar to Quarriers. Um, so we'll have to see. We'll see if any of these come. It's amazing how many people, though, are starting their own companies and doing their own publisher. With all wonderful due respect, half those people that you saw today will be not, they're, they're gonna fail, right? And that's the way things are. And I don't mean it to be negative, but some of these people may go on to start the next asthma day too though, who knows? We're done with our live coverage here, folks. It is the end of the thing. Do we have anything else to say? Here, Chaz, come on. Come on real quick, talk your mic. We have to give Chaz credit here. Hello. Because he's been doing all the... I, I feel naked without my clipboard. I saw. <laughs> Did more people show up than you expected or was that about the number? Uh, no, no, that was more. We, we had about half that many that signed up before today, and the second half was just people that showed up today. Well, I like, I like that some people showed up just to talk, right? Yeah, that was nice. That, that was neat. And I, we saw everything from a, a published, almost to be published game, yep. to someone who just basically had an idea. Yeah, yeah. The range was really interesting to see. Yeah. And, and also, uh, the, like you said, that, so that was such a neat one to end on. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But what's interesting though is also most people, that, that's a tough thing. So give everyone credit here. I could feel some of them were shaking and stuff. Yeah, yeah. it's a very, we do this all the time. So it's not as problematic. I'm being given the signal to hold the mic higher when I've been telling everybody <laughs> all morning. Oh, I, th I think I'm ready to put the clipboard down for the week. We and are. <laughs> so the, one of the reasons that and we Chaz, do it the way we do it here, folks, is it's that we... only because you do no better. <laughs> we, well, that one guy said, hold the mic up. He's like this. I said, no, you need to put the mic up. He's like, all right. I was like, all right, I give up. I give up. But um, uh, one of the reasons we do it, we front load on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, because we actually do like to attend conventions. Yes. So for the... 
today, then later on we can go to convention and tomorrow. That's one of the things that we we do this for. We appreciate all of you watching. We'll be back with we're going to be cutting up some of the videos we did over the last week and posting them of the different people. Chaz will probably be doing coverage on his own channel. A little bit, yeah. And then we're going to be reviewing games like a madman. Two weeks from now, Dice Tower Con. Lots of live coverage from Dice Tower Con. Chaz will actually be the I, front man for it. He will not have the clipboard this time. I know. I will actually be able to be in the seat at Dice Tower Con. Well, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you're doing? Oh, okay. So, um, uh, Marty Cannell uh, and I are going to be hosting a live stream uh, four or five of the days at Dice Tower Con. We're going to be doing publisher interviews, and also we've been given free reign each day to do a couple of things totally with our own creative control within limits, is what we were told. So, uh, we have some ideas I for will the... regret this, I'm sure. <laughs> that, that's our goal. You got the memo. Uh, so we're going to have a little bit of a variety. We want to you know, keep it interesting and informative and uh, really try to have a good time there at the convention. Because Dice Tower Con is so unique, so laid back. It's just like a giant gaming club day. You know, we want to kind of bring that atmosphere to the interviews and everything throughout the week. And then we're going to also be streaming a few, not all of them, but a few of our shows that we do there. Specifically, we'll be streaming our top ten list and the Dice Tower Awards. I know who won all the Dice Tower Awards. Mm. You have not shared that information with anyone. I have shared that, inf I have shared that information with one person who needs to know. <laughs> there are three people who need to know. Me, Eric Summer, and Derek Porter. Fair and enough. that's maybe a couple others. That's it. <laughs> but we're trying to make it cool. We have really great trophies hand out. Okay. Ooh. So this is all coming up in two weeks. But between then and now, reviews, more stuff. But for now, we're taking a break. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Chaz Marler. Who's still not holding the mic up to his mouth. I'm Chaz Mar It's Chaz Marler. There, how's that? And you've been watching the Dice Tower. <laughs>